Are you recording this? Hey, good morning everyone. I welcome back to my YouTube channel and today is Saturday morning and the time right now is 7 a.m. Exactly 7 a.m. And today's date is February 3rd, uh, 2024. So the first thing I want to shout out is Happy Chinese New Year to everyone. Uh, this is Happy Chinese New Year season right now. And this is where you get a lot of money. Uh, a lot of money. And so if you have uh, if you have any Chinese blood in you whatsoever, your family's gonna give you all kind of money in a, in a red envelope and they just give you money. I don't know why, but it just, that's just tradition and culture. And uh, yeah, so, so why do I do Saturday morning stream? Uh, so Saturday morning stream is not scheduled. I don't want to schedule it. That mean, if I schedule it, that mean I have to commit and change my life for Saturday morning. But I want to take, I do Saturday morning as what you call a uh, target of opportunity uh, or ad hoc. I just, just mainly just opportunity. If I have free time, I'm going to do it. I do not have free time today, so there's a hard cut off time. No matter what, somewhere around 9.50, maybe 9, I'm, I'll go with 9.30. Somewhere around 9.30, I'm going to have to be done because I am going uh, to the rifle range. I'm going to go do some shooting. So, uh, and I got to go, I got to go and catch the bus and all that stuff so yeah and so I can't I can't just be uh, sitting here and but 10 o'clock no I have to leave my house at 10 o'clock so somewhere around 9 40 9 30 so between that time I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off and then then just leave yeah so I like uh, I, I want to do this Saturday morning uh, because usually Saturday morning is when I play video game I play uh, all kind of video game MechWarrior Online, Guild Wars and you know, Call of Duties, uh, you know, uh, Division, I love the Division a lot. Uh, that's one of my favorite games of all time. Um, and so I just play a lot of video games just with, you know, with friends and families and stuff like that. And that's my time to chill with them. Uh, I am a gamer, I'm an I'm a avid gamer, so I love all kinds of games. And, uh, but, you know, ever since we started talking about finance, it just had literally just dominated my life, you know. And, and also my YouTube channel. <laughs> So my YouTube channel is really focused mostly on uh, a very small segment of group of people, you know. So it's, so it's just the Asian market, and uh, you know, just and most of them Asian immigrants or those who come to the United States, and if they need help and you know, uh, you know, how where to live and you know, drive a license, learn English, and uh, you, know, you know, dating and and uh, you know, even simple thing as. Uh, seating arrangement with the in-law where do you sit you know uh, cough, uh you know when company invites you to a dinner where do, where do you sit how do you greet what to wear what to dress you know i was i was answering all those questions i was talking about mainly those things uh and and how to start up company in the united states you know or how the tax code works and uh how the money moves and, and stuff like that just mainly those kind of questions and Small business, a lot of small business owner, a lot of Asian small business owner, you know, uh, open and convenience store, uh, restaurants and stuff like that. Now, I never work in these business, uh, <laughs> but what I do is when they ask me the question, I do the research and I do the best I can and I go find somebody who knows, you know, because I got relatives and cousins and, and, and people that own small business. And I just call and ask them. I said, hey, man, uh, how, how does this thing work? And so then I try to find what I read and my knowledge of research and then and their information, so I just put it together and I make YouTube video out. That's you see how I do it. Uh, but ever since we talk about money, man, it just it's just been occupying my space, and and it's good, and that's a, it's a good problem to have, because money is what make the world go round. Literally, what drive the engine to drive everything? How to generate money? How to get rich? Um, everybody want to get rich. Everybody want to get rich, and so I'm gonna give you the secret. I'm gonna tell you the answer. Like some other YouTuber, they just gonna like, you gotta subscribe to them, you gotta, you know, pay the Discord membership, you gotta join their Patreon, you have to do all kinds of stuff, you know, uh, just so you can get the answer. You have to take their classes and give you, and then and it's like a teaching moment and how to get rich, how to be a millionaire. No, man, it's not that complicated. It's not that complicated at all. Not that complicated. I'm gonna give you the answer, and then whether you agree or disagree, that's that's your choice, but I'm gonna give you the answer. Now you don't have to call me anything like that. You don't have to do anything crazy. Um, and and then we'll talk about it, we'll debate about it. Um, you know, so that's pretty much it. Let me go ahead and switch my music. That was my intro. 
and then I'll, I'll frame the condition. Yeah, so Saturday morning uh, is usually reserved for video gaming, but my scheduled live show is actually on Sunday night, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. So 7 to 9 p.m. This is, this is Sunday morning, 7 p.m. So what I'm trying to do is try to capture the Asian time zone on the other side, uh, you know, the other time zone. That's, that's the reason why I'm doing this, and uh, <clears throat> to reach out that group of people. Because, believe it or not, I know most of you who watch this channel, they only see like mad, you know, like, you know, the people in the United States, you know, like, uh, well, Matt is not in the United States, Matt is in Australia. He, he literally stay up all night just to hang out with us. But, there, but there's people out there, uh, you know, just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of U.S. customer, there's a lot of U.S. people, so you just tend to see the same people over and over again. But, no, I got people from all over the world, you know, Europe, Asia, a lot of Asian, uh, I mean, my literally the name of my channel is Asian name. So, yeah. So, yeah. Happy New Year and uh, welcome aboard. And we're gonna talk about how do you get rich. And that's that's all we talk about all the time here is how to get rich. And there's 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 many ways to get rich, but there's the one of the best way to get rich. And we're just gonna talk about the best way or the easiest best way to get rich. All right. Let me. Let me get a piece of paper so I can timestamp these things, and uh, so I can write stuff down. I'm somewhere, somewhere in the morning. I'm gonna get my breakfast and I'm gonna eat. I just don't care, you know. I'm just gonna eat while I'm streaming and stuff like that. I'm just gonna because I gotta, I gotta rush the time. Uh, it's a cut, hard cut time. Uh, so, Matt, uh, I'm gonna go shooting this morning. Uh, have you? Are you a shooter by yourself? I, you know. Uh, yeah. You do? Okay. You know, one thing I like about Florida, man, they got this gun range uh, all over the place, man. Uh, are you are you go you go to your local gun range and shoot? Uh, at, at times, <laughs> I can barely a, hear you. Uh, I'm sorry, Matt. Let's let me see. I can turn up your volume. Oh, you're already max. Can you get closer to the mic? Um, is that any better? Yeah, a lot, lot better, lot better. Oh, okay. It's it's there's a large wildlife management area. Uh, that's pretty close to me. That's a public hunting area. So if I really want to shoot, I can go out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, um, uh, I I love I love shooting rifle, pistol, all kind of stuff. But what I do is is I just go to the shooting range. One thing I like about it, I don't have to own anything. I just I just borrow their gun and shoot. You know. So when yeah. people talk about the 1911, I say, hey, can I borrow the 1911 and shoot? And you just pay for the ammo. And sometimes there's a rental fee, you know, like $7, $9 for the, you know, for the, the weapon system you want to shoot. And, um, right. But, but sometimes when you go there so often, the guys are like, yeah, yeah, just shoot this one, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, they, they tend to hook me up with that because I pay for the ammo, you know, I pay for the ammo. And, then you, you, yeah, of course, you always have to pay for the ammo. But... But they, they just let you use the you know the, you know their pistol I and mean, it's, it's sometimes good. I, I really like it. Yeah, I like I like shooting. I I always love lo I always love shooting. Uh, it's just been I I didn't grow up shooting uh, because I grew up in Boston. I mean, there's no guns in Boston pretty much. Uh, but there's except the criminal. You know, if you're good guys, you're not carrying guns. <laughs> I I did. I I grew up hunting and, yeah. and fishing and all that kind of stuff and I, I used to reload my own ammo and all that kind of stuff wow wow that's pretty neat man yeah, yeah so this is a this is one of the privilege that we have as an american citizen not everybody in the world get to shoot um one of my good friends he played games with me he's from germany and he loved guns but he's a rich boy so if you're a rich boy you can get a special license and there's only they don't give so much license his dad I forgot what the, the claw was to get the license, but his dad actually has a hunting rifle in Germany. And and so they go out and shoot. Uh, and he loved guns, but they, he can't, you can't just get it. You can't just go and randomly get it. It's like smuggling drugs to get the gun. And uh, yeah. And um, so he talk, we, me and him, we talked about guns at all. He would, he would actually one of those guys who buy ammo magazine, you know, like guns and ammo. And, uh, <laughs> and uh and read uh i was like you know that's how he learned his english he learned his language reading about gun it's just crazy there's so, 
Uh, I know a, I know a kid who's in uh, in Japan. Japan there's no gun rules also, and he love guns also. I mean, just there's a lot of people love guns, you know. Um, but in the United States, you know, it's uh, if you like if you like guns, you like shooting and stuff like that, and uh, it's. Um, this is one of your rights as a citizen. You you have the right to carry a firearm, Second Amendment, you know. So it's interesting. Your different country have different laws. Now I, I I'm still I'm still trying to figure out you know what's the balance is because you see country without out guns like Japan and Korea, and is it safer? The question you know you always ask is it safe? It's better. You know what they have? They have they still this people still get shot because the criminals still get guns. And then people get stabbed, and there's a lot of knife and axe fighting too. So, <laughs> so criminals still gonna happen, and and people and and uh, the police officers still need to carry guns to defend themselves because the criminals do have guns. Uh, so even a country with no guns whatsoever, the yakuza is still walking around with guns, and uh, because that's the equalizer. Uh, so it's 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 still pretty uh, pretty pretty interesting uh, factoid. Do you know that, Matt? By any chance? Uh, what's that? About guns in other countries and stuff like that? Not, not really in other countries. You know, I, I know that, uh, you know, the U.S. is pretty liberal when it comes to guns. Yeah. I mean, but what do they estimate that there's um, just in the state of Wisconsin? Yeah. For example, if you took all of the hunters, there's over 800 or 900,000 registered hunters in just the state of Wisconsin. Wow. So, yeah. And if you and if you take just the state of Wisconsin, that's like the fourth largest army in the world, in just that one state, because yeah. all those guys got those hunting rifles and everything. So I would hate to be a country that's going to invade the uh, continental United States. It would be bad for. Them. Oh yeah, yeah, totally agree. <laughs> this is like Red Dawn, Wolverine, yeah. Wolverine, <laughs> <laughs> the old Red Dawn, the nineteen eighty Red Dawn. That's a lot more fun than than the oh, new yeah. Red Dawn. Um, yeah, so I, I, I watch, uh, uh, Matt video. Matt, can I show you your YouTube? Sure. All right. Uh, so I subscribe to Matt and, uh, and it is, this is a video I saw. I thought it was, let's, uh, let's commercial, cut the commercial here. And, uh, your, your, your live feed is not on the uh, Discord, by the way. Oh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, let me, thank you. Because it's Chinese New Year, and I have a lot of Asian uh, clicks, so you, like almost all my commercials is something Asian, like this one right here. Yeah, so this is Matt right here. This is the guy I'm talking to. Matt, I can barely hear you, just letting you know that. Uh, that's Matt oh, right there. Uh, and he's talking about, uh, yeah, first of all, go check out his channel. Uh, go subscribe him if you like, if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of... A lot of Asian people love camping, but they can't camp. Um, they, they they just there's, camping is not not something they do. Uh, you know they don't set up they don't have a, like campground like we have. You know, and and so yeah, I just sent a link to Matt and Matt talk about you know outdoor and all that stuff. One of these days, you and I we gotta go out and do. I keep we keep talking about it all the time, but I just I, I gotta get out of the yeah. You know, once I get out of this job, then. Uh, then, then obviously I have more freedom. But I'm gonna bring my cyber truck. I'm gonna park my cyber truck right there, man. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Well, we, don't live too, we, we don't live too far away from each other. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So what he's setting up here is what you call uh, a two-man tent. It's called two-man tent, but he's setting up what you call a half shelter. This is a half shelter tent. So people call a half shelter tent or a two-man tent. And now I have never set up a half shelter. This is the first time I've seen it. So because when I set it up, it's two men. Uh, why? Because I was in the military and it designed for your other half. So you get a half, they get a half. And then you sleep, you, you connect it together and you sleep. Yeah, when, and it, the way it was designed was you carried one half and three poles and yep. another guy carried another half and three poles and you partnered up with somebody and together that you made one full tent and both of you slept in that one full tent. Hopefully it was somebody that you liked or that liked you. you know? yeah. And you can see this snap on right here. That's, that's right there. Oh, I can't, uh, 
I'm sorry. Uh, you can see my mouse. Yeah. You see the snap on, and uh, now I don't. We don't have these kind of robe. So this must be. Was this come from the package or the robe? Your robe. I don't remember this kind of. Uh, yeah, that, that's normally they they have white cotton ropes like yeah. it's on on the on the pegs down below. Yeah, but uh, it, it's easier to use paracord because it works a little bit better. Okay, so that rope is not come with the inventory. No, because when I was in the military, uh, oh no, when I was young and doing that, you know, obviously, I don't we don't have that anymore. You know, <laughs> right. um, so the snap on, uh, yeah, we don't use a. Five, five, five fifty, and here's a pole, and here's the snap. You just snap onto this thing. It's pretty good. I like it. Oh, I still, I don't have the, I still have the kit. I don't have the actual tent. I don't have the pole, but, um, so the poncho liner. Now he's using this is a simple poncho, but I have one with insulated poncho liner. So, uh, so when you sleep on the ground, you're not, you're not. I mean, you, you essentially sleep on the ground and the temperature transfer over you. I have one where it's, where it's insulated. Have you seen that? A poncho insulated poncho? Oh, yeah. Yeah, huh? yeah. They call that a, uh, they, they call that a, a, a poncho liner, actually. And a lot of people call it a whoopee. Yeah. Uh, it, it snaps right in. Sometimes it zips right in. But usually yeah. it ties right into the underside of the poncho and it yeah. insulates it. Now, I have used this. I have used this in uh, Australia. So when I was in Australia, we, we had a training area and mosquito was brutal. And plus we have, I've got what disease has come from mosquito. Uh, it was, uh, no, I can't, I can't think of, malaria? No. Malaria. Is it malaria? Yeah. I forgot what it was. We have to take pill for it. Hey man, these pills was yeah, good. You, you, you gotta take those quinine pills. Yeah, is, is that what it is? Yeah that's, yeah, that's bad stuff. Yeah, so we have to take pills and these, this is the first time that I used this was when I was in Australia. I think I was like 18, 19. When, when I talk about these tents, man, like they, they, like when I tell my Marines now these tents, they, 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 they don't know what I'm talking about. They have no idea. There's no picture of it anywhere. There's like no picture, no video. It doesn't exist. Like. You go find the old man in the room right now. They they like they don't know what they're talking about because this is this is like what you call some it's like pre-Vietnam inventory, you know, and uh, so this is like it it come. I don't know when they built this. It's probably like World War One or World War Two, uh, and and I don't know when they faded out, but it's just been around a long time, you know. It's just like same thing as like uh, the the can opener. People talking about these can opener. And canned food, and to us, it's so foreign. We have no idea when we talk about like, hey, military use issue canned food, and we're like, and you need a can opener, and you have to carry a can opener, and and they didn't understand that, and I didn't experience that. I was at the tail end of this tent, so I like I was probably my 18, 19, and that was the last time I saw it. I have never seen it again after that. You know, that was a long time ago. You know, yeah, just go skip that ad. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and it, you know, the, the the basic tent's been around for a long time since about World War II. Yeah. And then they, you know, they, it, the, it's went through Korea, and then a lot of guys had the same tent in Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, and they they just stopped producing it uh, not too long ago. The the bug net is pretty new. You know, that's just an eBay item. But there was so many mosquitoes out there yesterday that it, they were just killing me. And to to even stay out there, you have to use the bug net. Yeah. Well, like you know, when I go visit you, I'm gonna be staying in my cyber truck, so I'm gonna sleep. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my dividends money. I'm gonna buy the ten kits, the version, you know, the the ten add-on. Have you seen that? They're like a camper oh, yeah. add-on to the cyber trucks. Well, I actually, I, I drive around in a in a Toyota 4Runner, and I actually built the whole uh, drawer system for the back of it, so so I can sleep in a in a mattress in the back of my Toyota 4Runner. Yeah. Well, one one thing I need to did did you did you do it yourself or you pay somebody? No, I did it myself. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Um, one thing I have to do though, uh, you know, when I get my truck, I have to. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. Like, I'm I'm just not handy. I'm not a handy person. <laughs> <laughs> so so I have to pay people. I mean, 
Well, what I do is I call my dad. I call my dad to come down, and he will just build stuff. You, you and my dad are, are, are similar to each other, man. My dad will come into the house. He would just fix stuff. So come here. If you look there yeah. now, I've, I've I've snapped the second half. On yeah, the yeah. First half. Yeah. I see that, man. Yeah. Now I like this configuration. This is when you're chilling because in the military we do a lot of chilling. Um, when when we built this tent for the first time, when we practice it, we practice in the back in the backyard of our base you know in the, in the, in the, in the perfect grass open field you know like 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 golf course course think think about golf course grass good good terrain good everything but when you yeah. go to the training area or go to places sometime the the environment dictate how you're going to set up <laughs> it's not it's not going to be perfect grass it's not going to be like open field you know oh yeah yeah you this is a good area i mean you take a few chunks First of all, uh, he's setting up by himself. When we set it up, there's a hundred guys next to you, so you get one tent after another, and you got you have to be aligned and all stuff, military alignment and all stuff. You can just set it up any way you want. Okay, so here's something interesting. What time is this right now? Is it not morning? Yeah, it was, it, this was yesterday morning, about eleven o'clock. Yeah, here's something to think about when you set up. Uh, it's up to you, but if you if you're by yourself. Uh, I would set up where the sun, when you, where, where the opening is facing the sun. What's your take on that? Uh, you can, that, that's not bad. I mean, it's, uh, the, the sun was, was right up where, uh, uh, it, it wasn't, I wasn't getting a lot of shade yeah. in this right now. All I, all I would have had to do was turn this around 180 degrees and I would have been totally in the shade right now. Yeah. Now there is no scientific way of why set up in the you know east, west, south. You set up where the direction that you can escape. But however, <laughs> you you the, it's a psychological thing. It's just psychological. When you wake up, when it's it's really the purpose of it is for you to sleep. So when you wake up, yeah. it's it's psychologically you've been out in the field for a while and you're you're like you just beat down. Oh, I love this setup. This is called the redneck revere revere <laughs> interesting <laughs> do you come up with the name or is the actual that's the actual name i didn't know no that no, no I, I i just i just thought of that i'm just that, that's what i do come here i go out in the woods and i do stuff like this and i say goofy stuff oh, people all right. love it all right <laughs> okay so yeah well you can say that I, well when i when i do i'm gonna call it the come here uh come here setup <laughs> come here Oh, that's funny. Uh, that's funny. No, um, no, I like that. You know, because I, when you set up tent, this this is too claustrophobic. Uh, if you want to do it this way, you do it this way if you want to maximize the rain. You know, like to protect yourself from the actual rain. But I like I like right. the, the 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 redneck method that you just did, because you essentially you just want to you just want to live there. You, you just want to set up so you can uh, see enjoy the environment you mainly the biggest thing for shelter is protect yourself from from the rain and the second thing is from the cold and the wind and stuff like that you know but um but i you know from a military guy perspective i always i don't like i don't like to be blind you know like i would i would set this in the woods you know like deep dense in the wood you can't even see me not in the open and so then i would put leaf foliage on it i would just build like camouflage around it you know uh, but uh, but I like the idea that I can uh, be able to walk in and you know go in and out easily without without doing anything else you know. Oh yeah, and you know we we don't really have that consideration of snow and a lot of severe weather. You know, yeah. it, it rains a lot in Florida, but it, mostly mostly your setup is going to be open air where you can get some ventilation. Yeah. In there because it, it's just so hot. And in a couple of months, it's gonna to be too hot for me to go out there. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is awesome. I love, I love this one, man. But you do a, you do a lot of, what, what's your favorite survival? Are you more like Gray Bear or that survival man where he just take a camera and just, and just go out and with a knife and try to survive? Well, I, I can totally do that, you know, but there, there's a lot of people that that on in the YouTube survival niche that aren't that aren't really surviving. You know, YouTube started paying these guys 
seven or eight years ago so much money yeah and a lot a lot of them just used their, their all the youtube money and went and bought a piece of property and now they're they're just doing what they call survival videos from literally their backyard where i'm at right now in this video yeah. i it takes me an hour to drive there and then it takes me 45 minutes to walk there so yeah. I'm nowhere near any place, and I'm I'm out right next to the swamp. You know, one thing I want to do though, uh, one, uh, l let me make sure I my position doesn't lock out. I gotta I gotta click on something here, <laughs> otherwise, um, otherwise this thing locked me out. I want to keep it open because we're gonna talk about investment here soon. I just think uh, you know, since Matt is here, I just want to compliment his video and uh, and have opportunity to talk about, you know. So this is one. Of, this is my my mantra. You know, like uh, uh, most people push for subscriber. You know, and for fan and for stuff of like that. I don't have fan. I don't have subscriber. What I try to create is friends. I, and and this is why it's hard to compete against people like me in the investment space. For whatever reason, I don't know why it's so competitive. Uh, there's other YouTubers out there. They feel the need to want to compete against me, and I keep telling them, you can win. I'm brand new. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I don't know anything about investment and stuff like that. So we're learning this journey together, and uh, and you you can, and but if you're gonna if you're gonna try to compete, I don't know how you're gonna win because I am happy with just there's four people in our Discord right now, and I'm happy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm happy as a clam. Uh, whether you have a thousand people or 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 a hundred people, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, well, everybody's trying to sell something now. Yeah. They're trying to sell you e-guides to invest. They're trying to get you on their Patreon so that you can pay them two bucks a week. And yeah. especially in the, in the survival niche, they're trying to sell their products, their branded products. They're, yeah. they're pointing you to their Amazon stores and stuff. Everybody's trying to sell anything. On my channel, I don't, I don't try to sell them anything. I don't care. If you want to watch it, watch it. If you don't, I don't care. Yeah. And, and, that, and, that's why, and that's why I like your investment community yeah. that we the canaries because you're not pushing e-guides you're not pushing them to pay you to yeah. learn or to pay you to be a part of the discord yeah. i mean we're, we're like it's like we're all family on the yeah. Discord. yeah we're, 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 fr we're essentially it well that's what that's what we is what uh, i try to create my my uh in in my mind how i view it is Imagine back before there was internet. Imagine before there was YouTube and all stuff. How do you want to learn about investment? You're probably going to go to the library, right? That's, that's probably where you start. So you go to the library, you pull it, you, you go and look at the billboard. They say investment club, Thursday, 7 p.m. Uh, meeting. Sunday, talking about, you know, dividend. You know, Thursday, talking about stocks or something like that, you know? Come join us. So you pull the tab and say, okay, I'm going to go to the to the club and you go to the library and there's a conference room there's a classroom in the library and and everybody's coming in for the first time you walk into the library for the first time or this this me and they say they say hey good morning uh or, or good evening by this time good evening uh, i'm you know I'm, I'm new my name is Khmer and i i want to learn about investment uh is this okay to join and then you know the the host who's running this they're like yeah this is a community investment. We want to teach you how to get rich and make money and stuff like that. And we're going to talk about money. Uh, there's some coffee there. Put some put put a dollar and you get some coffee, and uh, and some cookies if you want. You know that's what the dollar's for to pay for the coffee and cookies. We meet up on Sunday and Thursday. Uh, if you if you like any books, let's talk about some of your books that you read. And uh, tell tell me tell us a little bit about yourself there, Khmer, and uh, and your investment style. And everybody in the room all sat around watching you and learning. They're like, they're like, yeah, you know, I uh, I start off in comic books. I, I you know I deliver newspaper and comic books, baseball cards, and then um, after that I you know I you know I try work odd end job here and there to make money. But my investment journey started essentially when I was in the military uh, with CD and uh, and and uh, treasury notes and and bonds. You go go buy. At uh, at the bank because that that's what my corporal told me to do, and so I, I did it. I didn't did I know anything better? No, I, I don't know anything better. But that's what he would told me to do, so I did it. <laughs> and then uh, and then after that I went to retirement plan called TSP. That's a military 401k. Uh, but other than that I don't know much about it. I just started my journey, you know, in January 2022. 
Uh, so I'm brand new, uh, you know, and you know, so into an investment. I want to I want to own stocks. I want to own Coca Cola. I want to own Tesla. I want to own all these things, but I don't have a lot of money. I'm pretty poor. So what's how how can I own all these company? You know, and and this is that's that's essentially that's essentially what we do. Just and does it make sense, Matt? Are, are you are you there? I'm sorry. Did we cut you off? All right. So, uh, hey, yeah, yeah. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And uh, so, yeah. So, it's just a community, a small community of uh, like-minded people hanging out and talk about investment. And uh, that's what I'm hoping for. That's that's the journey. And um, with that journey, I hope that we all can get rich from it. And then, well, let's let's talk about that. How do we get rich? How can we get rich? And uh, so, if you want to join uh, the conversation, you want to ask questions, and you wanna you wanna ask me questions, you can ask in uh, in YouTube, or you can ask me in Discord. So, preferably, I like you to come to Discord and just have conversation with me. Because it's really, really difficult to explain finance, personal finance, over texting. Really, really difficult. And so it's just it's not effective. So come into Discord, have conversation, ask. Because number one in Discord, you can exchange Excel spreadsheet, PowerPoint, uh, Word document. Uh, you can change picture, videos, uh, and then voice. You can talk about things. It's it's just really, really difficult to explain investment. Just purely from from texting, you know. So yeah, that's the best way to do it. But yeah, by all means, ask me questions and then uh, let and and jump in. All right, let me click on uh, link to Discord here and send you the link. Like I say again, uh, it, you know the reason I do Saturday morning is mainly for the Asian uh, 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 people who watch our YouTube video. A lot of the question, a lot of my question come from Asia uh, and Europe. So there's a lot of European watch our U YouTube video also, but uh, Europe, and we start to get a lot of Australia, I think mainly because of Matt. And every time they hear Matt talk, a lot of Australian are like, oh, I want to join that bloke. <laughs> They're like, uh, Matt, is bloke a, a, a good term to call young man? Because I hear you guys call each other bloke all the time, but okay. Uh, so let's talk about. Uh, let me timestamp this. We're going to talk about investment. I was going to pull up the PowerPoint tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow Sunday night, we're going to do the PowerPoint. Hey, Matt. Yeah, it is. Actually. Sorry, bud. Um, I was just watching it on YouTube. Yeah. That's all. Oh, we, I was just asking you a question about bloke. Is that a, ter, a, a good term? You know, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I hear you guys yeah. use it all the time. Bloke, mate, comma, digger, buddy, pal. All the same. All the same? Where, where, I wonder yeah. where that come from. It's like because you're a bunch of block uh, or something? Nah, probably the Anzacs, mate. Oh, the inmate? Okay. Uh, yeah, um, mate, bloke, Sheila, you know, it's it's been in our vocabulary longer yeah. than I've been around. That's crazy, man. It just that when you, you when you study the history of Australia, it's it's very comical in some way, because it is. Yeah, they they just the, the British Empire just send all these inmate and they just drop them off here in Australia. It's like here's the Wild West <laughs> and survive. And guess what? All these inmate yeah. create a a really good society you know out of that a really good community yeah and uh and i'll get a plug in early up just like our discord <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah because of Matt, we got a lot of a lot of australian all right so right now i'm going to timestamp this and with uh, oh by the way matt i'm not going to be able to stick around long because i got to go shooting rifle range and so it's a hot, I have to leave at 10 o'clock no matter what. 10 o'clock is my, yeah. I have to get out of my driveway. But at, um, uh, you're right, bud. so somewhere around 9.30 is when I call uncle and I got about, you know, 30 minutes, 10, you know, 
10 20. I'm already dressed, my gear is ready to go, everything is packed. I did all that prior, me jumping on a show. So, what happened? Worst case scenario, I was just gonna grab my stuff and go. But I'm gonna eat breakfast yep. while I'm doing streaming and all that stuff. So, I'm gonna maximize yeah, everything. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. What time is it right now in Australia? Uh, 10.35. Yeah. AM. All right. Yeah, this, this, this is the reason why we do this on Saturday morning is to capture that group of people, you know, time, uh, time zone. All right. So I'm going to timestamp this 35, uh, 23. All right. Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And, you know, our YouTube channel focus on making money, getting rich. And there are many, many ways to get rich. I'm telling you, there are literally many ways to get rich, all right? Um, but we're talking about a very, very specific way. And this is a very niche, small segment of group of people who actually follow this path. Uh, you know, majority of the people do some other path, but we're a very, very small group of people. What we're going after is high yield dividends, okay? And what we're going after is essentially income, you know, uh, stocks that generate income. So in order to get rich in this method, you have to have money invested into it. Now, you don't have to have money starting money. You don't need $100,000, $2 million to start off. You can, you can start with $100, $200, whatever amount of money you put in. Just remember, the lower you put in, the longer it takes. The more you put in, the shorter it takes. That's all it does. There's just time horizon. Uh, so, like, I put 1500 a month into my investment. That's a lot. Most people can't afford 1500 a month, all right, because if the, a the average income for the United States is about $36,000 a year, and you're putting 1500 I mean, you're essentially putting almost, what, $16,000? Uh, let's, let's do the math real quickly here. Um, so 1500 times 12. 18,000, wow, I'm a little off today, my, my math skill. Normally I'm pretty like dead on. Um, so I'm putting about $18,000 a month into this thing. So you think about it, I'm putting almost half of your the average income. So yeah, so that as a result, my portfolio is gonna look a lot different from somebody else. I mean, that's why I have like 154,000 in a very short time, all right? Because I'm putting a lot more in. If uh, if you put only $100 a month, yeah, it's gonna be very short time also. It's gonna it's going to be very long time, sorry, not short, uh, very long time. And then and then not only that, your, 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 the compounding is gonna be a lot slower, all right? My compounding is very, very fast. Like, I can, I'm making a lot of money in a very short time, all right? And a lot of you ask, well, how much money do you make? Uh, well, let's look at it, all right? So I go to the dividend tracker, I haven't punched in all the new numbers yet. Uh, we are currently experiencing technical issue. All right, great. Uh, so right now, right now I'm making 6,820. So just think about it. my value here is 117. Let me show you portfolio. So some right now the market value is 126. So there's off number and then my cost base is 154. Uh, and then so why, why the number's off? Because there's a lot of stocks in here. It's not in here. Like for example, uh, all these stocks, Tesla, all these stocks here, it's not in here, all right? Because it's only for dividends. This is dividend tracking, and so, so that's why it's that's why it's not so not it's not everything is calculated in there, all right? All right. So with that, I have about 117 with all these stocks. And I'm generating 6,800. Now, I only got 6,000 last month. 6,000, that's it. That's all I got from last month. But this month, from February to March, I will get 6,800 uh, because I haven't got paid by February yet. So, in uh, the first week of February payments is defiance. They're going to pay me $1,000, all right? Uh, because I have QQY, IWMY, all right? And then. The following week, the second week of, of uh, February, I'm going to get paid by yield max. So essentially, I'm going to get paid by Tesla. I'm going to get paid by TSL. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Tesla, uh, SQY, um, Connie, AIYY. So those guys are going to pay me. The combined, um, 
let's see if they, they actually they actually list it out here. Alright, well let's go to the calendar then. I thought they list it out here. So here's all the things that are gonna pay me. Uh, so essentially the first week, Connie, IWNY, QQY, SQY, they put Tesla in the, in this week also. Okay. Uh, look look at the money. I'm gonna get all this by by the tenth, by the tenth of February. I'm going to get all of these guys. Uh, I'm going to get $5,600 in there. Like, bam. And then the second week, oh, in this case, TSLP here, it's going into, I don't know why TSL, I don't know, TLC, TSLP is supposed to be like the third week. So TSLP is not listed here. Uh, yeah, that's, that's TSLP right here. It's going to pay me $88. So TSLP is going to pay me $88. Now, um, we don't know. These are all estimate based on the current dividends. We don't know what the new dividends. If they pay more, obviously it's going to be more. If they pay less, it's going to be less. And then Cliff going to pay me a thousand dollar. Now what's missing is Ymax, Ymag because they all new. They haven't been registered. It has to be in the system almost a month for them to register. So there's a lot of fun that's not in here. So my third week, there's going to be three fun in third week. TSLP, Ymag, Ymax. Uh, Cliff, uh, my fourth week, I only have one. So my first, second week. My third week, my fourth week. I'm so happy. You have no idea how happy I am. So ever since they opened YMAG and YMAX. We're going to talk about, about that later on. Um, so with that, that's how I'm generating 6826 And a lot of you like asking, what about taxes and all stuff? Now, how U.S. tax code works is that if you work for somebody, the, the employee has to do a W-4 and they submit that to the tax. That's how the, the government knows that you're getting paid. All right? to the, the employee employer. So what I do is my salary, so my salary, I just take uh, almost 40% of my salary toward taxes. So I increase my W-2. So uh, you got my normal withdrawal for single guy withdrawal, and then you then you add on, I add on essentially another, uh, uh, so think about, I, I just change it so now my number's all messed up. Um, I make up. I make roughly about ten thousand dollars a month, and uh, I withdraw about four thousand dollars, four thousand dollars toward my tax. So uh, that sixty thousand dollars left over. Now remember, also I have to pay um, some other stuff too. Uh, so four thousand in tax and some other stuff, uh, and so roughly you know like Social Security and all that stuff. That's not counting it. All right. So essentially, five, half of my money. Oh uh, well, either way, I only take home three thousand dollars. Put it this way: I take home three thousand dollars. All the other one, it go into my retirement plan and all that stuff. Three thousand dollars, four thousand of which is is tax. Okay. So why do I take so much money? Where do, how do I pay bills? I'm making ten thousand dollars a month, and how do I pay bills and all this stuff? That's crazy. Oh, well, I got I got I got source of income, and this is one of my other source of income. So essentially, I'm not making $10,000 a month. I'm making $16,000 a month right now. And it's increasing, you know. Yeah, that's, that's how, that's the answer to the tax question. So $6,800 a month. So, oh, the other way is if, there, there's three ways. You can do it to your W-2, or you can pay the tax directly to your IRS. Go in, create an account, and just send them the money. That's it. Send them money every quarter. That will solve that problem. Or the third way is like what most people do. Just do the taxes and find out how much it costs to pay it, and they just they do a monthly payments out of that. You know, <laughs> that's what I did, uh, and so I don't like that method as much, but I've done that, and I I, I, I don't mind doing that over and over again. All right, so that's six thousand eight hundred a month, and you can see it's growing. Uh, I'm you know it's growing because if you listen to my video, any of my video last month, it was six thousand dollar. If you listen to my December video, it was five thousand dollar. So I'm growing really, really fast. Um, so, and I'm making an annual income eighty-one thousand. I'm on my pace to get ten thousand dollar. Right now it's February to March. I'm on my way to seven thousand. It take it take about three months to get a thousand dollar. I'm not going to reach seven thousand until March, March to uh, April. So March somewhere between March and April, this thing going to go seven thousand, and uh, and then. I'm going to take another two two months or so. Why? Because if you take six thousand, let me just give you perspective. So this way you understand 
how the math works. Uh, the simplest way is for every thousand dollars you get about fifty dollars worth of dividends. For every thousand dollars you put in, you get about fifty dollars worth of dividends. It's just simple, very simple math. Or you put two thousand dollars, you get a hundred dollars worth of dividends every month. All right. If you two thousand, you get a hundred dollars dividend. That's if you buy a high yield dividend. High yield dividend is fifty cents or more. Obviously, some of them you're gonna get paid more. Some of them gonna get paid less. So fifty cents or more. If you don't get fifty cents or more, that formula I just tell you does not really work. All right. Um, so let me show show you. I'm talking about how I calculate. How do I get like. You know, how do I know, how, how do I predict? And I said, I'm going to make $10,000 a month. The best way to do it is use an Excel spreadsheet. But I'm just going to give you a basic math here so you can understand what I'm talking about. All right? So to make $1,000 a month, let's say QQY, uh, QQY paid me $0.85. Cents. I have 1,060 share. So it's going to give me roughly almost $900. All right? So it's not $1,000. But if you look at IWMY, it's 260 share, but they pay they pay a dollar and 29 cents. So if you take if you take 209 share, uh, 200, what, what's the number again? Just blank out. 260 share time one dollar and 29 cents. There's 335 dollars. So it's way over a thousand dollars. So if you combine those two, make over a thousand dollars. Some of them, uh, like Clip, it's a thousand dollar by itself. It's singly by itself. All right. My goal is to get a thousand dollars a week. It didn't matter how I get a thousand dollars a week. Would it take one fund or three funds to get a thousand dollars a week? Get it. So I'm gonna. I want to get a thousand dollars a week from first week, second week, third week, fourth week. So that's four thousand dollars a month. So now the next goal is to get to to expand a thousand dollars a week. Uh, to get you know first week two thousand, second week you know three thousand, and fourth week another two thousand. So that gave me roughly what you know seven thousand um, dollars, and then to get ten thousand. So essentially, you know, three thousand first week, three thousand in second week, and three thousand in third week. Doesn't matter how I get three thousand. Like for example, clip. I'm probably not going to grow clip anymore. I already have eighteen hundred share. What I do is I just buy maintenance. So like I bought twenty share. Like uh, I'll give you an example. I bought twenty share. Twenty share on one sixteen. I bought 20 share 130 for 14, 1552, 1438. You know, what do you call maintenance? Every time I hit the 52 weeks low, I will buy something. That's it. If not, I'm just not going to buy any. You know, I'm just buy a little bit. Just 20 share, not a lot. So what I do with that money? I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna take clip money and grow another fund, another fund like like uh, another fourth week fund. There's a lot of fourth week funds out there, uh, like uh, TLTW. Um, uh, CLM, you know, those are four weeks, and XYLD, QYLD, all those guys, um, I can't think of it right now, it's just blank out, but there's a lot of four weeks, four weeks has a lot, so maybe I'll buy one of those guys and grow that, so get my third week to $3,000, so $3,000 first week, $3,000 from second week, $3,000 from third weeks, $3,000 fourth week, that's $12,000, you know, uh, ultimately I want to get like uh, $5,000 each, you know, $5,000 from first week, $5,000 from second week. So ultimately I get $20,000. That's like ultimate dream right there. That's like, that's my goal. Will I make it? Yes. I'm going to show you the math. I'm going to make it. Not, 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 not even long. I'm going to make it within by 2026. This is 2024 right now. The end of 2024, going 2025, I'm going to make $10,000. All right. It's, and then by 2025 to 2026, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make another ten thousand dollar. It take me two years to get ten thousand dollar, but only gonna take me one year to get ten thousand dollar. That's crazy. It's just crazy math. That's the power of compounding because as long as you keep investing into high yield dividends, you're gonna make a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money. You're gonna get rich. You're gonna, you're gonna be very successful. And you're gonna be fine. Uh, let me just pause for a second. If anybody wanna jump in and say something, and I'm gonna take a second to read. The YouTube video, all right. Um, so YouTube is no nobody saying anything. Uh, so Pablo say hi guys and and he's in Discord. Um, anybody in Discord want to say something? Uh, let me ask the Discord community: Do you believe in the power of compounding? Does compounding work for you? If it works at four um, percent every six or twelve months. It works infinitely better 
um, when you're getting four or five percent a month and you can compound it every month instead of biannually or annually. So yeah. The yeah. snowball is real. Yeah, the power compounding is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh it moves so fast, so fast now. All right. All right, let's talk about let's talk about the calculation. How do we calculate these things? So when I told you the baseline formula is very simple. For every for every thousand dollar equal to fifty dividends. Okay, let me just give you perspective. If you buy IWMY, the cost right now is nineteen dollars, or right, nineteen dollars. Okay, but if you get a thousand share, you get a thousand share. You don't even need a thousand share. But if you get a thousand share time one dollar and twenty nine cents. You're getting over over a thousand, twelve hundred, you know, one thousand two hundred ninety. But so roughly to get a thousand share, to get a thousand share, you need almost nineteen thousand dollar. So about twenty thousand dollar. We we use the the twenty thousand dollars a formula, you know. But obviously, if you buy Tesla, it's only nine dollars. Just think about that. And if you buy QQY, it's only seventeen dollar. So depend what you buy. AIYY, sixteen dollar. But I just use twenty dollar as the baseline number for my calculation. Every you know twenty dollar, and uh, yes, yes, solar hits. That's an easy, easy, easy math formula. For it, I just I'm just sharing right here twenty because the stock price is twenty dollar. Okay, right? and they pay you know, you know fifty cents to a dollar range, and so. If you take, um, and I just I just lost my train of thought. So anyway, to own a thousand share, which is a thousand dollars a month, that's my goal. You need twenty thousand dollar. All right, that's it. You need twenty thousand dollar. All right. So going back to my calculation again, I'm making six thousand every month. So every month I'm making. Let's say let's round off to seven thousand. Every month I make seven thousand. Seven thousand. As long as I put that money back into the high yield dividends, well, guess how many months it take me to get twenty thousand? Three months. That's it. Three months. If I, you know, the first month I get seven thousand, second month I get fourteen thousand, third month I get twenty one thousand. Three months I will get twenty thousand, and in three months I will get a thousand dollar. But obviously, math is not that simple because there's compounding. Because the first month you're gonna get some money. And then the, the next month you're gonna get that some money add on to it, and then plus the new money. So an inch is going to compound. So you really, it's not really three months. It's like two months and something because they're compounding. But the simplest way, simple math, is every three months because I have 7,000. 7,000 a month every three months. When when you only have 1,000 of income, to get 20,000, it's going to take you 20 months. But if you have $2,000 of income, it's going to take you, to get 20,000, it'll take you only 10 months. You know, you see, what I'm talking about. If you have four thousand dollars of income, it only takes you five months to get twenty thousand. That's why it moves so fast. It moves faster and faster in a rapid rate. So the goal is to generate as much income as possible. All right. Now, what do you do with that income? Well, number one, uh, it's in addition to the money I have. So I'm, I'm making ten thousand a month. This is six thousand. So sixteen thousand dollar. Or if I make one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, this is eighty thousand. So I'm a two hundred dollar man, or two hundred thousand dollar man already. There you go, woohoo! You know, you know, uh, you know when they're talking about six figure, six pack. I do have six. Well, I don't have six pack as much anymore because I'm forty years old now, and but I still work out, you know. But you know when they're talking about all this thing, yeah, I'm a two hundred thousand dollar man already, right? And so. Can I make more? Yes, I'm on my way to make a lot more, a lot, lot more. As long as I'm still working, you know. <laughs> Got my coffee here, and uh... I get a question for you. Yeah, and yeah sure. Cra cra crazy idea, right? So yeah. I have like, oh my god, it's like 110k left in student loans. I got to pay off, right? Yeah. And so I say this crazy idea. What? You put like 30k into one account right into mm -hmm. just these type of like the index the defiance index funds mm -hmm. right and you're getting over a thousand bucks a month no. you could essentially just pay off your student loan just using the dividends yep yeah 
Yeah, what's wrong with that? I mean, why why you uh why you doubting yourself? I'm not doubting myself. I just kind of thought about that when you kind of brought up that number because I'm like, oh, paying that thing down is going to take forever. I'm like, oh man, it must be a way to kind of automate it in a way <clears throat> without having to kind of go into your paycheck every month. Yeah, so um, right now I'm not using this money. So this dividend is going back in the recycle itself. I'm not using it. But when I quit work, I'm going to use the money. Then obviously it's not going to work the same way. The formula is not going to work anymore because i got to pay my mortgage, my car payment, my cyber trucks and all that stuff. So all that is not going to work as much. So here's my thing on the student loan. Are you able to do the student loan payment, the student loan without without using the dividends? Yeah, B barely at this point. I mean, it's it's because of, yeah. You, you still need the student loan. It's, I mean, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Still, you still you still need the bottom line is you, you you take your do you take your dividends out? No. All right. No. Nope. That case, Not I would just all. say, I would just keep paying the student loan because the student loan interest is almost nothing, nothing. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Don't, don't rush it to pay the student loan. Rush it to pay, and you can defer. You can't defer a car loan. You can't defer, um, maybe you can. I don't know. I never tried it. You can't defer a home payment uh, without some kind of penalty. But you can defer the student loan. You can... You can call Sally May or the student loan company and say, hey, uh, I can't pay right now. Uh, can I have a delay of six months? I'm pretty sure they work with you. you yeah, problem? yeah, they, they definitely do that. It's just, uh, yeah, uh, the COVID, once they uh, shut all that off, it was kind of out of sight, out of mind for 99% of the uh, population that had uh, student loans. <laughs> yeah. And then they came, they got turned back on, and oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm eating live stream because I'm trying to maximize my time because I'm going to I'm go, I'm have a hot cut date, uh, cut time. I'm going to go to the rifle range and shoot. And so I uh, I have to uh, have to maximize my time here. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it'd just be interesting to see if anybody's done that. You know what I mean? Like, if anybody's kind of like to, to pay off student loans and, and other debts while they're, you know, still working, still investing and no, now, saving for now retirement. What I know? would recommend paying is credit card. Do you do you have your credit card? Do you, do you have credit card? I have a wife, so absolutely. <laughs> She's not listening, is she? Nah, they're all sleeping, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Pretty soon, man. Pretty soon, uh, I'm gonna be joining that club, man. And uh, and no, Michael make good money though. So I, I she, 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 she look at my money here and she just laugh. Oh, puny toy money. Oh, cute. She, I saw, I show her my uh, my uh, one, one. She had no idea how much military guy get paid, you know. So I'm I'm top of the food chain in terms of salary, and so I'm very proud of it, you know. And then, um, and so one time I was showing her my uh, my uh, LES statement. I said, "Oh yeah, this is how much LES is the you know, the, the pay stuff." Leave earning. Motor. Yeah, my my earning, leave an yep. earning statement. And yep. uh, I show her one time, and most people would you know like my parents, my mom, her eyes just explode and like, oh wow, my God, that's a lot of more blood. And uh, you know, I show my girl uh, my LES, and she she was like, "Oh, that's cute." That's cute. You you probably can buy a bag with that. <laughs> what an insult to my manhood, but that's okay. You know, not everybody. Yeah, I'm drinking coffee, enjoying it. All right, so um, uh, yeah, I would pay the credit card, dude. Credit card, because it's like, oh, credit card right now. Oh, I have no credit card. I just paid off all my credit card. Um, I, 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 I literally took the dividends money. I, I don't know if you remember somewhere down the line around 10,000. Uh, I, I would draw 10,000. The reason why I have such a high cash here, because I would draw money. So I, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to withdraw some money from my dividend stock and pay pay my bills. And I did that. And I took $10,000. So now I have no credit card, but I have, I have a margin now. <laughs> 
And um, yeah, because credit card is ridiculous. You're paying essentially thirty percent. You will never pay it off. You will never pay it off, dude. You never. Oh yeah, they're disgusting. Ever since yeah, yeah since last year, and they didn't like notify anybody in any kind of constructive way. It was kind of like. Mm -hmm. You log in because everything's automatic, right? I don't sit there and, and manually pay them, right? Log in, I'm like, what the hell's going on? This has been past 10 months just checking to see where it is. It's like, my God, like these things went up from like, you know, 9, 8% up to 26%. Freaking crazy. Yeah. Pay your credit card. That's, 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 that's the thing. But I would not use the dividend to pay anything unless you are ready to pay. Because the moment you take it out of the cycle of its compounding, you, you, you're not compounding anymore. Because the moment you take the money out, you're not compounding anymore. So it's gonna hurt you more. I would not do that unless you, unless, unless you have, now obviously if you need it, you need it, and then, then do it. But if you don't need it, you don't have to do it, then don't do it. You don't wanna interrupt, never ever interrupt the compounding. That should be another Diddy ROM that I create. Buy low, sell high, never sell a loss, and then um, uh, if you're a dividend investor, invest in dividends and never interrupt compound compounding. There you go. That's my my new ditty. Yeah, it'll be nice to see once. I mean, I I just took over my accounts. What was it last beginning of last year? Yeah. I looked back at my early earliest buys, and they were in March when the whole financial bank crisis thing happened, and uh, so I think after. I think after this, first, once we get like two years in, it'll, it'll be nice to see that compounding because I've seen it in other people's accounts where they've had even like a target date fund and wow. they've had it for like six years and they're up by like 50% and that's and they haven't contributed to it. So it's just like pure compounding of dividends being, um, you know, just being compounded over, over time. That's why you really, uh, time in the market beats timing the market over the long run. Just look at my portfolio, man. You want to know how compound works? Just look at my portfolio. If you watch me, if you follow me every week, you see it grow fast. I mean, it's not. I'm not making it up. You know, it's not like I, you can't. You you can't make it up. You know, because what happened is, if you look at the uh, the last video, I had only five thousand or four thousand. Then I had five thousand. Then I had five thousand five hundred. Five thousand six hundred. Then I have six thousand. You know, it. Every week I'm buying something. As long as I keep buying these high yield dividends, this number always continue to grow, and 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 I will always going to receive. Like the following month, I will receive that month. You know, so yeah, it's it's unbelievable. The compounding worked really really well. I mean, it's the eight wonder of the world. You know, like I don't know who said that, uh, but somebody said that. But that's I totally believe that person. Totally believe it. All right, let's answer the question. Robert Blaine, how much do you have invested in this to generate the annual income of $81,000? All right, so you're looking at this is my Charles Schwab account. Um, to get eighty to get $81,000, you essentially just looking at my income fund. This is my income. I have other stocks, like I own Tesla, Rivian, and AI, and all that stuff, but they don't generate income. So they're, they're essentially there only to do option trading. Or learning option trading but this is my income fund my ETF all generate income and all of them generate various amount some of them generate a dollar 30 just think about a dollar for every share you get a dollar 30 a dollar 60 55 cents 85 cents a dollar 29 two dollars 69 cents 57 55 cents so they they generate various amount of income but essentially 50 cents or more obviously two dollars a lot more and the goal, in, uh, the goal is to buy share, as many shares as possible. I have 6,000 shares of Tesla, and Tesla pay 55 cents. We don't know what February pay is, but January pay, pay 55 cents. So all you do is take 6,212 times 55 cents, oh, you will get 3,400. There you go. There's, there's my money. If it pay 55 cents, if it pay 50 cents, it's going to be a different amount. But if it pay 60 cents, it's going to be a lot more. You know, so it's depending on how much you pay. But that's it. So how much does it take to get 80,000? Well, you combine all this together right here in my in my portfolio. 
$118,000 market value right now. Oh, my cost base is 150, so it cost, yeah, about 150,000 dollar right here. Uh, but my market value is 118. So this calendar right here. Obviously, you're not going to get that all at once. Now, a lot of people ask me this all the time. What happened if you receive a hundred thousand dollar? Would you do this investment strategy? Yeah, $100,000, I still would do it because I, I'm a, I'm a high-yield income guy. But but if I have $3 million, somebody gave me $3 million, for example, I don't, I don't need to do this. I don't need to do this at all. I just go buy something more conservative. Uh, matter of fact, you could just put in a U.S. Treasury note with 5%. Or you can just go buy, uh, I don't know. Because you're talking about $3 million. Now what you're trying to do is preserve your capital. All right? You want to preserve your capital. So I would just buy uh, US Gov. Is it Gov? Oh, I, you know what? I forgot. Uh, it's uh, ETF, for, ETF for bond. Yeah, buy that. <laughs> I'll pay you five percent, five percent every month. I'm like, I mean, yeah. I mean, because you have, to, you're trying to preserve the three million dollars, so you don't need to do anything. Just buy U.S. Treasury notes, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's it's different strategy depending where you at. My strategy is I'm trying to get rich. I'm from from nothing, from zero, from no money. So when you when you when you start, this is the funny part. Um, when I first started the investment space, this is how I know the person is starting to scam me. All right, um, I, I I don't know which YouTube video guy I was talking to. Well, I do know, but I don't I don't want to say it, you know. And uh, so I was talking to this guy, and he essentially said, "So think about my my Charles Schwab account said zero. Zero count value, zero, zero, zero across the board. I brand new, I just opened it, and I have a thousand dollar coming in. So with a thousand, my, my first thousand dollar, he said, "Hey man, why don't you buy a CHD? Why? Because he made YouTube video on SHD. He said, "Yeah, put money in SHD." And I'm like, I look at him, I'm like, "Well, I mean, I may be new, but I'm not stupid. SHD only generate three percent." That's gonna take me forever, and then he and then he talked. The next statement, he, the, the the statement he should make is, yeah, but but you're looking at compounding, you look at growth, SHD have good growth and balance. When you brand new, you want to start off balance, which I love SHD. By the way, a lot of people think I don't like SHD. I love SHD. When I get tw when I reach twenty thousand dollars, you're gonna see me buying SHD. Uh, uh, you know, not just SHD. Uh, v, VMG, or v, VTI, all these other, you know, uh, you know, growth balance slash, you know, uh, dividend income, you know, I mean, you're gonna see me buying a lot more of those things too. All right, I don't mind. I don't mind. I buy. I will buy those things because I like them. I always like them. All right, and but when when you when your account is zero and all you have is a thousand dollar, his advice his advice to me or his conversation to me should talk about, uh, you know. You're doing it for long term. You should do a growth. You should. You know. You know what he said. His first statements is risk. He's looking at from risk. That's when I know that he's a YouTuber, not a, a financial advisor. I would never tell somebody from that perspective as to, to start off. I would, you know, just just having a conversation. If if somebody said, "Hey, I'm thinking about getting rich, and I want to buy all Tesla," I said, "Yeah, go for it, man. What's wrong with Tesla?" Oh, I want to buy uh, Connie. I, I don't know anything about crypto. Oh, he's a, go for it. Buy Connie. Oh, I want to buy, uh, you know, well, I don't know, SQ, SQY, just random. Yeah, okay, great. What's wrong with it? I, I don't understand. Why? Well, you know, there's all these risks. I said, what risks? You have zero dollar in your account. What do you worry about? What do you worry about? The thing going to fail tomorrow? Well, that's what they told me that Tesla gonna fail back in November, or back in January. I'm sorry. 
They, they tell me it's going to fail. The thing is a month old, and it... Think about it. The Tesla was a month old, and... And people were saying it's a scam. And it paid 99 cents. And I remember the video came out, people start talking about scam right around here. A couple months old, and they're talking about scam. Like, what are you talking about? And so people like me, that's why I'm just... Right now, I come to a conclusion, I think I'm one of the only few high yield dividends people talking about. Me and Coach. Coach talk about high yield dividend also. Great video, uh, great contents. Go go watch Coach. T uh, THB, I think. Here. We're, the, we're, we're one of the few people talking about it. This is THB channel. Go watch him. Awesome guy. Uh, great contents. I, I watch almost all his video. All his video. Matter of fact, I think his best video is this one right here. He actually showed his portfolio just like mine. I don't know why he's sensitive about it. <laughs> he's not very sensitive about it, but but that's that's his. So he owned 6,000 sh uh, share of Tesla also. Yeah, they, but there's not many people out there now. Like, uh, there's not many people. Like, if you just type Tesla, uh, because people like people like this guy, Calling a scam eight months ago. Three three months, three months to existence. Three months into existence, some call somebody call it a scam. Like what are you talking about? See, that's when I knew I knew that I knew that they are not they're not investor. They're not looking at the way I am. Like I know how to make money. I'm an investor. I was very good at home rental property. I was very good with comic books. I was very good with baseball card. I was very good at taking care of my uniform. Like I was very good at taking care of my car, my my you know, whatever I touch, I become an investor. In term in relationship too. You no, know, I invest all my energy into a relationship. Like, if the girl leave me, they leave me. It's their fault. A lot of time they do leave me because because I'm in the military and I deploy and they don't want to be a widow. I know I got it. Totally understand. You don't want to be a widow. And just yeah, you know. And then and then they don't like the long separation. They just can't handle the long separation. I got it. Totally understand that. But man, when I'm with them, I'm all in. 100% all in. Just like everything I do. It didn't matter what I do. If I'm going to do push up, I'm going to do push up. I'm all in. I'm I'm 100% committed to all that stuff. Because why I'm going to die anyway. So why does it matter? <laughs> so, so you just you just go out and enjoy and have the fun. Have the spend the moment that you have with the people you love. Spend the moment. Spend take the time. And spend with it. Yeah, there's people out there saying it's a risk. Like, what are you talking about? How is it a risk? Uh, where is uh, ETF Bobby? I'm just gonna our favorite. Like, like. Like for example, you talk to her. She's she used to talk about uh, dividends, and I love watching her video. And all of a sudden, she's anti anti high yield dividends, like crazy. There's all these people, you know. So essentially, now the space is getting small. And nobody's talking about high yield dividend anymore, except a few people. Retiring dividends still talk about it. I uh, still invest in it. Max is doing it. Uh, KC is doing it. Uh, you know, uh, Panda. Uh, you know, Panda still talking about it, and then there's some other some other people talk about it. Um, yeah, this guy, Honorable Investment, used to talk about high yield div. I used to watch all his show, but then he started hating on it. I don't know why. All of a sudden, he just hate on it. He went from he went from high yield dividend to hating high yield dividends. So um, yeah, so so our space is getting smaller and smaller, smaller. So essentially, we're the only one talking about now. I mean, there's only like a few people. I'm the only one who who like like literally talking about it extensively. All right, high yield dividends. But here's the crazy part. Let's look at the new ETF launcher. Look how many high yield dividend born every month. Every month is new high yield dividend born. Here, good congratulations. Just this week alone, we got two of them. QQI. Why mag two? Every week there's some something born. There's new high yield. Last week was Y max. 
you know? There's new one born every every time. There's like 50 of them now. It's crazy how many of them. I can't keep track anymore. I can't keep track. There's just so many. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a space. And, and, and so when people talk about with risk, you have zero dollar in the money in the bank. And they're like, don't buy these things because they're risky. Oh, man, dude. All right. I don't have a million dollars. I don't have a rich uncle. I have zero dollar in my account. I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to... Because I take my chances, it's the reason why I got 6800 a month. Now. All right. What, hey, guys, what do you think of that? What do you... What, what do, you, what do you think of all those people telling you that it's risky? Who who in here have somebody told you that was risky? Huh. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a few bites here for a second. You're right. Um, I get told all the time it's risky. And they're probably right. But I'm the one that my bank account is filling up on. So... I'm going to let the math do the talking for me, and it's working out well for me. I get why people think it's risky. They see share price depletion. Um, my normal thing is, for those that are new, keep your average cost per share close to the current share price. When the share price recovers, you'll be sitting pretty. It's really a simple formula, mate. It's... It, it's no more simple than that. In all honesty, it's craziness. Yeah. Totally crazy. Kangaroo, the, I'm sorry, uh, who, who's that? Uh, uh, Rob? Okay, Rob first and analytic, and then I think Kangaroo. So, Rob, go ahead, Rob. Yeah, um, you had just answered my question because I was the one that sent you uh, the question about how you're generating the 86000 a month, but... I haven't heard uh, any really bad things about these. I'm just I'm new to the uh, new to watching this and uh, seeing what kind of money that this generates. Because I'm normally a day trader where I trade options on stocks. You know, I'm a scalper. I'm in and out constantly, but I'm looking to put a portion of my money into something like this that generates income. Yeah. You know, consistently every month. That's what that's so what I a lot of our option traders do here. Yeah, and I appreciate you showing this. I came in late into your um, live uh, broadcast. That's why I had typed in that question to you. But oh, thank yeah, you sure. For, no problem. Uh, now, you've been it. watching us a while, or you just, you just joined this morning? Um, I've been. I've, I've seen a couple of your videos that were pre-recorded. Yeah. So, and then I, I got in here this morning, and I see you see you were live, and then I, you know, joined your Discord, and yeah. then um, and I had typed in that question, and then I joined the Discord. So, have you uh, have you watched us on the the Sunday live stream and Thursday live stream? Uh, no, I haven't, sir. Oh. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No, no worry. No, no, no. Why, why were you sorry? Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Well, I just, it's, I feel bad because like I said, I, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of people like you on here are, you know, giving us the knowledge to learn this stuff, yeah. which I appreciate. So, but no, I haven't had a chance to catch, catch your Sunday. Yeah. Uh, we are, where we actually make money is actually in Discord. You're in the right space. You see, you uh -huh. see, there, there's a channel down below. It's called Option Trading Voice. Uh huh. Oh man, during the daytime, that thing is busy. That's yeah. where all the option traders hang out. Yeah, I've been trading options since uh, 1990. Uh, when did Dude. I start? 1998. So I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> Dude, that's where you want to hang out. That's where you want to hang out. Yeah. These guys, these guys, these are high roller. When 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 we yeah. when we say there's people make trading millions of dollars. They 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 they're trading in there, yeah. And and they're not they're not playing around. They're trading like you know hundreds of contracts of Tesla and stuff like that. You know they're small time yeah. trader and there's big time trader, and 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 they all hang in this space because they all want to share. And I love the way they do it too. So I love the way Kenny does it. He it, it's not like it's not like when I sit there and watch it. It's not like they you know it's not like you see the stock market going like buy sell buy sell. No, they're just talking. They're just talking general idea like they're as they're about to do something, you know? You know, they're like, and they, you put up a screen, they put up a screen, they're all watching at the same time. And essentially, you're all buying the same stuff, like QQQ, Spy, and Tesla, and Amazon, Microsoft, you know, all those companies. 
Yes. And so you're all trading, and so they're all talking about it. And sometimes weird, you find yourself on the opposite end of their trade, you know, and um, and that's funny. That's funny when when you get you get to see them on the opposite end of each other, debating each other. That's even that's that's like that's like you know that's to me is popcorn heaven right there, man. And uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, did you watch? Did you watch this video? Uh, I don't know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I got it on my laptop here. I can. It's uh, right. the shrunken down version, but I can. Yeah, there's a video called Episode 56, All In on Tesla. We won the trade at 187. Those are the option traders. That's why I came in this morning. I came in the morning, and that was in the option trading room. And you see all the option traders. Talk- the, every every single person in that room, oh, well, not every person, not some people just watch it. Um, they, they, we were talking about 187 strike price. You see how when they explained to me the the concept, they love they love us because they they they, they, they they're so knowledgeable. But yet you, you're talking about a lot of new people. You so you got very knowledgeable people and you got new people like literally just open account for the first time, and yeah. uh, and and so they love explaining these things. And uh, it's just it's just a great it's a great community, man. Okay, thank you. I know, like I said, when I trade SPY, I usually trade 100 yeah. contracts at a time. And then my other ones, I, I, I usually trade Tesla, NVIDIA, yeah. Triple Qs. You know, I, I have a list of 15 stocks I follow every day. So I'm, you know, picking which ones to choose from that I can see movement on. Yeah, well, since since now you have Discord, and you, did yep. you just join Discord or you, you came in? You came, I just you, I just basically, when I after I typed that question to you earlier, yeah. I clicked on your link and, 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 you know, put it on my computer here. So. Welcome, man. Thank you. So what Thank do you, you think, guys? You got more. You got another option trader right here. <laughs> <laughs> They're sleeping it. right it's now. Fun. Hmm? I'm sorry, Rob. Go ahead. No, I, I just said, I said, I love trading options. It's fun because, like I said, I went to a seminar back in 1998 um, to learn how to do this, you know, back then. And, you know, I and just, it's, you know, I, like I said, I've been in this, what, 20 some years. So I just, I enjoy trading the market. Yeah. So the other thing is beautiful here is, um, so you, you, you're going to meet community of option trade. Now, why the high yield dividends guys and option trader collide, like why they, why they as a perfect marriage couple is this. When, where do you put your money? They put their money, uh, so a lot of the guys, what they do is they, they take their wins and they buy Tesla or whatever it is, you know? And mm-hmm. they buy these high yield income. So like Kenny, for example, I'll just give you Kenny example. He buy, he own, uh, he own a lot what I own, but he owned Connie. He, you know, instead of owning 6,000 share of Tesla, he owned like 3,000, 4,000 share of Connie, SQY, you know, all, all these all these funds that pay high yield dividend. So think about it. Connie is paying $2.69 and he owned like, let's say, six, I, I don't, I've got how many he owned. Um, let's say he owned 6,000 like I did and time $2.60. 69, uh, 69 cents? I've got what it was. He's getting 16, uh, Roughly almost sixteen thousand dollars. I don't think I don't, I don't think that's a number. He probably owned three thousand. Somehow, somehow, his portfolio is making like ten thousand dollars a month compared to my portfolio. My portfolio only making six thousand dollars a month. His is making ten thousand dollars a month. The big difference is because he owned a lot of those. He owned like very specific one. Okay, that's his spending. That's his option trading money. Mm-hmm. And he just cy- awesome. he just cycled that way. Yeah. He used he the reason he wanna own Tesla is because Tesla gave him margin. All right. A lot, he, so he owned these guys to own to get to increase his margin and also to give him the increase the margin and also to give him the income. He take the income, use it on option trading as as his cash collateral. And then, and then when he got back, he he just it's like a it's like a three way cycle that he put in, in the, in terms of his money. Yeah, that's I, awesome. Are you doing that same method or I? I you no, have to ask I, them. I, like I, I, I probably explained I just, it wrong. 
No, it's okay. I no, I just I just started like use like three months ago of yeah. um, checking into all this. So yeah. that's why I've been watching videos, taking notes. You know, I've seen your videos, yeah. so I'm just it's new to me. I'm learning it, and but right now I just I, my uh, money that I have in my brokerage account, I have you know a vast amount of stocks. And then I got my cash to trade yeah. options. This is going to be my dude. Third you come at the right time too, man. Next week, yeah. Next week is uh, the the dividend payout. Uh, the next two payout, weeks, yeah. So Tesla is the yield max, not just Tesla, but yield max is going to pay. So think about I, I'm talking about these guys owning like five thousand, ten thousand share. Some of them own like thirty thousand uh -huh. share of these things. What do you, what do you think they're going to do with the money after that when they receive it? Yeah, it's like it's a like candy store. Are you going to hear that? this YouTube channel is going to be so busy in the next two weeks, all the way to payday? Oh my God, it's like, it's packed. Like during the daytime, the, the traffic movement in, in, in uh, the Discord, you post a question, it, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna be able to read it. It's like 200 something message. It is the busiest Discord I've ever seen anywhere. It's busier than League of Legends. Just think about that, League of Legends has like millions of people. This Discord mm -hmm. is busier than League of Legends. Yeah, it's crazy. Especially during yield max time, because you're yeah. going to have $20,000, $30,000 that's paid to you. That's just from one fund. You know, I told you, they don't own just Tesla. They own like Connie, QQY, Microsoft, Apple, all these other funds. And they all, But they all paid that during that, during that week. So when they paid, they got this huge chunk of money. And now, man, option trading is like, it's beautiful, man. It's like cash, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, cash cow. Yeah, cash cow. That's essentially it. And <laughs> oh, wait, are you Rob? You're gonna be drooling when you're talking to some of these guys, and they make good money. And and when the community's all together, they they essentially save each other from from failure, from critical yeah. failure. And that help that help out a lot too, because some of the newer guy, uh, like me, I'm new. Uh, you know, we got a couple of new guy here that that just literally just start option trading, and you know, whether it's a hundred dollar or a thousand dollars, still money's money. But they don't, mm -hmm. they, they're kind of like, hey, man, uh, my, like yesterday, um, Claude, Claude is very good. Uh, he gave us an example. He, he, so think about it. He's our sensei. He's teaching us how to do this stuff. And yesterday, Dilemma, we were talking. We, his, his, uh, one of his trade, uh, I think it was QQQ, it was, uh, was Trenton. It was like his, his stock is Trenton. So he, he's trying to figure out what to do, you know. So now you can see a whole bunch of community jump in trying to help him out, even though he knows what he's doing, you know. Just give him another perspective, you know. That he might he might take a loss, he might buy a small chunk to lessen the, the, the damage, you know. And so he's looking at all options, you know. It, it's it's just great. It was I don't know what he did there. Uh, anybody here follow what what Claude did? What what what's the end? Did he roll it or did he uh, take a loss or did he just, uh, yeah. We don't have, I don't think we have any option trader in here yet right, right now. No, it's good, Rob. Hey, welcome to the community, man. Thank and you. Hey. I, I don't I know do how a little my options. audio is, so sorry. Oh, Analytic, you do option too? I didn't know. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I just I just do I play I just do uh, cash secured puts and uh, covered right. calls on different um, funds. Like right now I'm doing um, – the Soxel, S O X L, the leveraged uh, semiconductor ETF. Um, See, so yeah, I bought that. What was it? I got 100 shares at 32, selling a at a $35 strike price for. Uh, and it's weekly too, so you can just sit there and you know buy and write if you want. That's what I'm most comfortable with is buying and writing. So I just buy 100 shares when it's down a little bit and put it like you know. In in that case, I think it's like. 5% out of the money or whatnot. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much what I do. Um, I, don't, I don't do it a, a ton just because, you know, especially on a leverage fund. But, you know, you can, some of the, like uh, even Tesla, if you got some shares of that, I've made really good money just buying that on a dip, selling out of the money, letting it cut. It follows the volatility of uh, Tesla at the end of the day. So yeah. um, I made. God, I made like like fifteen percent in in a week. I mean, I think it called away, but it was like it didn't matter. <laughs> it's so much that I just rebought rebought into it. Yeah. But the 
to go back on your comment about risk too, right? Yeah. I said, you know, this is just anecdotal, right? But I think people who were not investing during 2022 to feel real pain, well, this is like, oh my God, man, this is this is such easy times. Like there were some funds that were like um, playing on the VIX back then that went to zero, right? So it really like, I mean, it freaked people out. And then you got, during that time too, you had Bitcoin freaking go up to 60K and then dump down to next to nothing that year. Um, so yeah, it caught, like right now people are still kind of remembering that. I think as time goes on, the emotions will kind of relax a little bit. But even, but for some people it probably won't. Like my parents back in like the, the late nineties or whatever, they were in, my father had a good investment in, in uh, was it steel, US Steel Corp? And man, they crashed so hard too. So they, they, he stopped after that point and never went back to it. Like, you know, as much as I lecture him about that, but you know, it's, you know, some people get burned really hard, man. And it's just like, I don't know, it's just some resentment inside of them or something. And then they sell out and they sell at a loss and then they just, yeah, they just realize loss and they lost all their money instead of just holding on to it and kind of not looking at it for a year or six months or something like that. I mean, I went away, what was it, the end of November or something like that where we had some, we were just, the market came up, then it went down again and I went on vacation down to, uh, to Disney and didn't look at any of my accounts for a little over a week. And man, I came back and it was freaking so in the green and up. It was amazing. <laughs> but yeah, back to the risk thing. It was like, you know, everything is risky, right? Like in most of the funds now are all kind of hedged in a certain way. They're all holding bonds. And it's like, yeah, I had a financial plan. say, oh, what happens if we have a big market go goes down like yeah. a crazy amount? I said, well, if, if it goes down 90%, we're going to have bigger problems than just my account being down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be the entire government it, 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 all across the freaking globe. You know what I mean? If we get World War Three or something, everybody's going to feel that. It's just not going to be me. You know, it's, it's going to be a larger problem than just myself. You know, that's how, how I approach that. And usually they're like, you're kind of right. I'm like, it'll affect you too. What would you do? <laughs> you know, you put that question back to them. They're just like, ah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Carry on, I guess. Like with life, <laughs> life goes on, you know. You know, we'll be getting freaking COVID checks or World War Three checks or something. Who knows what the, you know, just kind of, you know, throwing ideas out there. But yeah, in terms of risk, it's, oh, everything's risky at the end of the day. You just got to be, you know, smart about it and, you know, do what's comfortable. And if you're sleeping good at night, then you're, you're doing all right. But if you're stressing out, looking at it every two seconds and every red day, you're freaking out. Maybe you need to rethink what you're doing. <laughs> now, uh, to answer, you know, I, I appreciate it, analytic. Uh, thanks for sharing that. You know, I, I agree with everything you said, so I don't really have to follow on to it because I agreed violently. Um, here's something uh, going back to Rob, uh, just, you know, uh, well, to anybody who's watching this. So, Rob is an option trader, but most of us, our channel is focused on high yield dividends. But so, why does option trader and 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 high yield dividend folks are such a perfect marriage? Is this uh, in order to understand how Tesla work? How do you? One of the question that high yield dividends people want to know is how much we get paid every month. How much do we get paid every month? Well, guess what? You can go and calculate that. Uh, and I'll show I'll show you how we calculate it. It's not it's not that difficult. You go to the fund homepage website, and it's down at the moment. Oh no, it's not down. All right, you go to the fund homepage, and they they openly publish this thing. You know, so it's open kimono. So they tell you exactly what they bid. So here is a new bid right now. All right, so here's the two puts. I don't know why they have two synthetic cover call. Uh, two synthetic call. That's uh, that's kind of weird. Um, uh, Maybe Rob can explain that, or somebody else can explain that. So they have they have one for 220, and on a put, and then 185, and they and they have two call 1220, 185. That's how you know that's the synthetic version of it. So extreme left, extreme right, and then it's far out of the money. Well, in time, far out in time, and then not only that, they're far out of the you know they. Uh, and they're also close in price. So 185, you know, from put, 
and 185 on the call, all okay? right? So that's, that's how you know the synthetic. So the other two here, this one here, this is the treasury, all right? But this is the actual cover call. So for 224, now we don't know that the 29, so, uh, so the 224, not necessarily the date, that's February 24, so February 20, but this is the actual date of the contract, 240209. So February 0209, that's how you read it. TSLA, that's the Tesla contract, and this is a call, so they sold a call, and this is the price. Uh, uh, oh, all right. So for so for 190, all right. So essentially, just think about it. the current price right now for tes Tesla. Tesla is is 187, all right. And they're selling this contract for 190, and uh, and there's two of them. There's 190 and 192. Ooh, I like it. They sub, they space it out. I, <laughs> I think they listen. They finally listen. Oh my God. Oh, hey, I, I like this. Rob, what do you think of them stocking it? What's your opinion on that? Um, I, I don't really do a whole lot of the synthetics, so yeah. I don't. I'm. Honestly, I don't. I I understand a little bit of the concept, but yeah. I'm basically I do more strictly call options and put options on stocks. And I've done straddles before, but right. the synthetic I'm not familiar with. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. No worry. So it's yeah. twenty thousand share, twenty thousand share. And you know, last week the one eighty seven, the one that I made video and I do push up and all that stuff, forty thousand share all in one number, one eighty seven. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so we we end up doing push up for that. That was that was ridiculous. I would love to hear what uh, retired dividends say about this one. He he's probably like he's probably doing pull up now, and he's probably doing sit up now just for the. He is so happy. He's probably doing. Now I don't like the one night. Well, the one night is good. So so essentially, uh, you can put twenty thousand share. All right, let's look at let's go to Yahoo and find out how much they pay for it. Remember one ninety, okay? So one ninety. All right, all right. So one ninety. So let's go to Yahoo. Uh, let me let me open a new one. Yahoo. Yahoo Finance. And then you type TSLA. And then you're gonna go to something called options right here. Option. Alright. Let's let's find out how much they pay for this contract. 190. Alright. So 190. Uh, uh, well, first of all, you gotta find the date. So this is February 9th, So we have the right date. Otherwise, you gotta drop down to the date. All right. So and then February 9th, and then you go down to uh, right now is 220. 190. Here's 190. Right here, 190. All right. This is very close in the money. Okay. So 190, and they pay essentially. They they earn three dollar and twenty five cents. Let me double check here. The bid three twenty five. So they earn 325 time. Uh, this is the part I, I I don't really quite understand it yet. So this is 40,000 share or 40,000 contract. I I'm so confused on this part. But either way, they're spending about six million dollars. Okay. Uh, so essentially, what you take is you take that three dollars. Uh, it's it's 300 dollars. So 190. So three hundred, three hundred twenty-five dollars. Uh, so it's three dollars twenty-five cents per contract. Uh, per, per contract. You know, each contract is uh, it's one hundred. So you time one hundred. So essentially, three hundred twenty-five dollars for that contract. Okay, time twenty thousand. No, that's not that's not the way. I'm. Somebody, some. I don't know if somebody can explain me this, but I, I, I don't understand that part of the math. So uh, I, I got to get it clarified. I still I would, think I think you take the twenty thousand and divide by one hundred, uh, or or you divide yeah or you divide it by the uh, the actual uh, contract uh, price, and that's where they get the six thousand dollar from, or six million dollars. Oh, I'm going. I'm. I guess I was going by how many contracts they bought. If you did yeah. it that math that way, so yeah. That's that's what I'm uh, yeah that's what I'm assuming too and I think I did the math wrong now I appreciate it but uh, we'll get more clarification but yeah. but either way they uh, they essentially generating um, yeah it's pretty 
pretty good premium. So if they win that contract, we're gonna make we're gonna make all this money here, you know, six six point eight million, four point eight million. So you're talking about roughly you know what eleven million dollars plus the premium, whatever the premium is. I you know, pretty good premium, pretty good premium. All right. Uh, oh, here's something I, I kind of noticed it. Wow, uh, Tesla net asset drop. They went from 850 millions to 778 million. So is this uh, share outstanding? But however, their share outstanding is um, it's getting higher. So there's 86 million share, but the net asset drop. All right, so that's interesting. Normally, their net assets always keep going up. It's always keep going up. But like I was just. That's interesting. An interesting yeah. situation here. All right. So, yeah, you just do this and calculate it. Now, I don't know how to calculate it because I'm not an option trader, but I'm just trying to figure it out. But um, but essentially, you just calculate this, and that's how you know how much you make, and you multiply that. They, they do weekly contract. You multiply that by four times. The total amount of, let's say they make, let's say they make $86 million this month for February. Well, they made $86 million, but how we have 86 million share, so 86 million divided by 86 million share. Guess what? We're all getting a dollar piece. That's essentially how we calculate it. Um, and I kind of screw up on the math. I have to think about it, how how they calculate the math. But that's how you calculate the income uh, from this thing. All right. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And and it's open kimono. And that's why a lot of the high yield dividend people want to learn how option trading works, uh, because that's because that's how yield max generate income. Now, the reason why we don't do option trading, because we want Jay to do it, because I don't have time, like people like me, I don't have time. I go to work during the daytime and I don't touch the computer. Uh, some people can touch the computer and they can do it, but I can't do it. So so as a result, I want I want people like Jay to do it for me, so they generate money, good income and stuff like that. Yeah. Is, is that what you're looking at too, uh, Rob? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, because I got, like I said, I don't, I don't put my eggs all in one basket. You know, you're, you're always best to diversify. So, as yeah. I said, I have a bas basket of stocks in my brokerage fund. I got my cash that I set aside to trade options, and now I'm looking to, you know, look at these high yield uh, max uh, yeah. fund or funds that pay out to for additional, you know, uh, generate income coming in. Because I'm I'm going to be 60 this year, and I don't yeah. want to be trading the market for the next 20 years. You know, there you I've go. Done, <laughs> I've fought my battles with this thing since 1998, yeah. so <laughs> it ages well, you. Yeah. What <laughs> do you think? Also, what do you think of fun. my portfolio right now? I have 6,800 a month of income right now. That's that's phenomenal. So yeah, I started I started there. zero in January of 2023. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, I'm, I'm really happy, man. I, yeah, I have no idea. I, yeah, I don't blame you. By the end of this year, I'm going to get ten thousand, and just in my math, because I'm, it's growing every month. Every month is growing a little bit at a time. So, yeah. uh, so by the end of the year, it's going to reach ten thousand, and by 2026, it's going to reach twenty twenty thousand a month. And and here's the beauty part about with twenty thousand, because my goal is to own a thousand share of all these funds, uh, mm -hmm. and. So they all pay me roughly not a thousand share. I, I keep saying a thousand share. I want to get a thousand dollar from every one of these funds. So that some of them, some of them need more share to get a thousand dollar. Some of them need don't need a lot of share. Um, so like Clip, for example, I need eighteen hundred share. But but Connie, I only need four hundred share to get a thousand dollar. You know, depending on depending on how much they pay in the dividends. You know. Yeah. What do you think of that? That's awesome. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and, and I, I try to get paid weekly too. That's my goal is to get paid. So I'm I'm trying to get paid uh you know, essentially uh one thousand from first week, one thousand from second week, one thousand from third week, one thousand fourth week, so four thousand dollar. So right now I have three thousand coming from my second week and uh one thousand from my first and uh oh actually four thousand. I get four thousand from my second week, one thousand from first and one thousand from my fourth. So eventually, what kind of happen? I'm growing. I'm gonna grow my first, third, and fourth week. So I'm gonna get five thousand dollars a month from every one of them. You know, 
You know, that's that's the goal. Like like that's in my head. That's the goal. Five thousand a month every week. Yeah. And and you get once you retire too, yeah. you get Tricare for like the rest of your life. So you don't is that is that right? You don't have to pay anything for Tricare. Oh, we do, but it's right? not that much. That's nice. That's yeah, nice. It's, it's like yeah. it's like eighty dollars, nine hundred dollars, something like that. I I don't know. Somebody told uh, one of my friend he retired, and I I look at his number. He's a family of four, and and he paid like less than a hundred dollar. Yeah, that's nice because a lot of people think, oh, I'm gonna retire. If, 44 or whatever and i'm like yeah and you gotta like especially in massachusetts you gotta pay for your own health care it's like mandatory you have yeah. to it's so expensive it's crazy no what the biggest thing we're gonna get is the pension yeah i'm getting pension for for the rest of my life you know and yep, then, we call it the check of the month club. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, and then only got pension. Then I get v VA benefits too. So, uh, and yeah, so it's yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be okay. You know, now I don't know much about the TSP when we retire and stuff like that. Uh, I think I think Tiger is gonna talk to his wife and explain to me. Um, and there's people I talk to. Uh, there's there's a counselor, a VA counselor that I talk to, like. Uh, what do you call a retirement counselor? And they can kind of give me some uh, uh, transition, and they can you can talk to and stuff like that. Um, there's a whole bunch of people out there I can talk to, but I haven't really dig. You know, I'm not I'm not there yet. So you're gonna see like as I get closer, I'm gonna I'm just gonna start talking about a little more and more. But right now, I'm I just I'm just trying to take the boys and get go go, go to the rifle range and shoot you know shoot rifle at the moment. You know. Yeah. Hey, Tiger, what's going on, brother? <clears throat> oh, sorry, I didn't have, realize my mic was unmuted. Oh, yeah. No much, man. Sorry, I'm cleaning. Oh, awesome. All right, welcome to the cleaning club. Um, yeah, and, and Joanna, good to see you. Did you just get off work or are you going to the gym? Morning. Good morning. Uh, no, I'm, I'm actually, I'm off today. Oh. I'm just, yeah, okay. I had a few things to do, and I've just been relaxing, cleaning my house, making some food. But but, but because you're such a night owl, you, you essentially stay up all night. I haven't been asleep yet. Wow. God bless mm -hmm. you. <laughs> how do you do it? How do you, oh my God, I don't know how you do it. Well, I mean, I work evenings, right? Yeah. So I usually... By the time I get home and waste some time, make my lunch, do my exercises, and see, it's already, what time is it? It's 6.47 where I am right now. So a lot of times I don't go to bed till yeah. 8 in the morning, sometimes so, later. Yeah, the, the night owl club is just unbelievable. You, Brian, you you all getting pretty close to each other now. You know, like all of all of you guys, you know, like you guys like click. This is like the breakfast club. Yeah, we're the vampire club. <laughs> the vampire club. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I like the breakfast club. I like that movie. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. No, we're just not dying walkers, that's all. <laughs> exactly. So what are you doing in here? You're looking. We're looking at your portfolio. Oh no, we were just talking because uh, you know I'm I'm doing live stream for the Asian audience and uh, time zone, and and there's there's some some opportunity for me to do that, so I did that. But I have a cu hard cut off time, uh, so in about thirty minutes. So at ten o'clock, I I gotta get I gotta leave the garage. So then I I should be at the rifle range. And uh, around eleven o'clock, and then, uh, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not driving to the bus. I'm, you know, normally we take a bus to go somewhere, but uh, I'm just gonna drive directly to the range to observe, drink coffee. I'm gonna swing by some Dunkin' Donut, maybe bring some donut to the staff. And uh, they, they're all there right now. They, they're probably shooting. They've been shooting since this morning. Normally, when you see my video and I take pictures, like I'm, I'm on the bus like three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. But no, I'm, uh, no, I'm just gonna go there check out uh, you know different different groups you know different uh, different relay spot you know just to see what's going on yeah that's that's gonna be my day after that I'm gonna go to the PX uh, I don't know what you call oh, it's uh, it's military base you know store you know like 
clothing store for military. Uh, I'm going to go take a look at some uniform uh, and last set of uniform to buy. Uh, I always try to wear fresh clothes all the time. I don't, I don't like to wear old, old clothes. Uh, a lot of a lot of the guys they they like to wear old clothes to show them they're salty they're they're old timer you they come in you know because what happened when the salt hit the uniform it changed the color so it's not green anymore it's like faded green it's really weird and ugly looking green and uh, so a lot of the guys who spend a lot of time on sea and that's what they mean by they're getting salty you know they're getting really salty and their uniforms just look salty I don't like that. So I don't, I don't like, I never liked that. I want my uniform to look like new, look like, look like I just bought it out of the store, you know, like yesterday. And I, just, I used to bring my, my uniform to the dry cleaner to get pressed, to get the lines down and all that yeah. stuff. Man, I remember the one time I go to pick them up and there's a note on them saying there's nothing we can do to help these. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I had... This one, when I was a uh, Lance Corporal, this one Lance Corporal, he was so mad that he didn't get to deploy with us. Yeah, it, uh, uh, we we all we all went somewhere and uh, and he didn't get to deploy, and so we came back. So I went out there, we were doing laundry, and he uh, and he literally thrown salt in his like salt, like uh, you know cooking salt. So I, at first I thought he put soap in it because I like I like hey that's pretty interesting you put soap in the salt. Salt thing. I was like, he's like, I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'm trying to get my uniform a little more salty. I'm like, what are you talking, dude? That's not how it works, man. Sea salt and cooking salt is not the same, and you put it in a washer. That's not gonna change it. <laughs> well, you know, he's 19. I said, I said, why are you doing this? Oh, because, uh, you know, I'm sick and tired of walking around and everybody's just looking at me. And, you know, when you stand up in formation, everybody's a little salty, and and in their uniform. And he's only one like brand brand new. I said, "Hey, dude, your time come. Don't don't sweat these things." But he did. But but the way he went about it was just didn't, he didn't understand how it works. So I told him, "I said, go to the beach. Go to go. You know, we we are in California at the time, Camp Pendleton. I said, go to the beach and jump in the water and just keep washing it over and over again. How about that? Why don't you swim? I mean, why don't you just go swim swim in your uniform? Uh, I'll guarantee you that's gonna that's gonna come." That's gonna get salty pretty quickly, and just leave it out there in the beach. Let it dry, <laughs> and then pick it up. One, one, oh yeah, why don't you put it on a ball and wash it and leave it, and then come pick it up like three weeks later. <laughs> but you know, it's interesting. Yeah, you could also just leave it out in uh, the sun, like put it in something and just leave it, and it'll get sun bleached a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You leave it out there too long, it'll be. But yeah, you you can do that with a lot of things. From the UV rays, it'll, it'll fade anything pretty yeah. much. But man, putting salt water in the damn washing machine, man. That, that washing machine ain't working today, I'll tell you that. Doesn't yeah. sound like a good combination. Oh, uh, I didn't see old Brian. Uh, uh, Brian, I want to introduce you to Rob. He just joined us about 30 minutes ago. I don't know. Who's that? Rob, right there. Hey, Rob. Yeah, I'm still here. Hello. Yeah, so Rob is an option trader. He's been trading for a while, and he's he's in your neck of the wood in terms of age, and uh, and yeah, you, you very seasonal old. option trader. You mean we old? You just saying we old? That's what just say. Yep. <laughs> just say it. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because back, you old guys, right? Yeah, I got it. Back got then, it. you know, Park my owners, my mom. <laughs> My mom was a big investor and she just, she, all she did was invest in stocks. So when I went to this seminar back in 90, 1998, they trot, they trade, they showed us 10 different strategies and they told you to take one or two of them and become an expert at it. So I chose trading options and then I showed my mom how to do it. And she, she didn't understand the concept at first, but then when she seen the money I was generating by buying calls and puts on stocks, she got in and she started doing really well too. So it's yeah. it's fun to learn all this stuff. Yeah, it is. Um, Everybody we had, we had, had a good had time had back then when she was. Right? Yeah, yeah, she enjoyed doing it. So. Yeah, so Brian's our option tr trading guru. He's also oh, our no. sensei. Oh no! Oh it, no! It's not. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's don't go there. Well, I, I self-proclaim you as not. my sensei. Nah. <laughs> 
So, you remember my motto, come here. Keep it simple. Yeah, keep, keep it simple. simple. Yeah, he. Yeah, you, that's you have to you have to keep it simple when you're trading. Yeah. yeah. Um, we don't do anything complex. There's plenty of them out there, but you know you don't yeah. you don't have to do that. And and we just do the simple strategies that make you a lot of money. So yep. it's pretty easy. If you know um, what you're doing and you do the research and you, you know, you have to be in the market a lot. So, and Rob will probably agree. If you don't have time to look at the market, you really don't need to be trading up. Because that's right. you really have to know what, what's going on in the market a lot. So, that's why I say I, I don't want anybody copying my trades. That's why I don't really talk about them anymore. Because <laughs> I see, there's a few people that try to do that and they can get in trouble because they don't know how to get out of the trade. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. Reverse the trade to a positive. Uh, turn it to hold to a whole different trade. So we really don't, you know, I really don't like doing that anymore. Me and Claude talked about it, right? So yeah. because a few people got in trouble doing it, you know, emulating the trade. So I said, Claude, let's let's think about it for a minute, right? I, you so, know. You yep. Know. So Spanland said that I am your grasshopper. <laughs> he, he, I, were you the one? I think I think they kind. I think you're the one who called me. Uh, you hold your horses, grasshopper, something like that. Take, take it easy, grasshopper. I forgot what you say. So it's been catching. It's been a. Uh, it's been a catchphrase ever since. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's tons. There's tons of trader and uh, and and Brian is is one of our seasonal expert here. You know that you know that we. We love talking to him. We love asking him a question. He, he, he tell it as it is. No BS. I mean, no BS. That's one thing I love about him. And well, there, there's no other way to put it out there. I mean, I mean, and I'm not no expert. Come here. Let's not. Let's just say I've done it a while, and I had Rob goes back further than me in doing it. So yeah. we're not even gonna go there. He went back in yeah. the day. I was running the business back then. I didn't do it till you know seven eight years ago. Start often trading, so I can I can right remember trading. I retired, so I retired, so I I started doing that on the side hustle, right? I had yeah. nothing else nothing else to do, so you know, hey. <laughs> I can remember trading Microsoft when it was at thirty eight dollars a share. I was buying options on it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That shows you how far I go back. <laughs> Well, we just got a, a new person just jump in, uh, Sasha. Sasha, this is the first time I've seen you. Uh, go ahead and uncue your mic and say hello to to the audience, to the crowd. Are you are you there? Focus, grasshopper. It come from Kung Fu series in the nineteen seventy. All right. Um, Sexy Beast, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. We talked just a little bit. Doing well. Doing yeah. Well. Yeah, this is great. Uh, I, I really enjoy it, uh, you know, guys. Um, it, it's just been a blast. Uh, I Get into the high yield div dividend. It's truly one of the best decisions I ever made. Because here, here's the thing: if you don't go, if if you if I went into growth stock, let's say I just listen to the crowd and just buy whatever they tell me to buy, you know, let's I, I don't know, pick pick a YouTuber out there. Let's say investment, investment for beginners, right? Pick any of these YouTube out there, anyone, didn't matter who it is. What? I didn't know Mickey Rye, uh She does invest. What? I'm a huge fan of her. I watch her all the time. What? She usually talk about nursing. She's talking about looking beautiful and all that stuff. I didn't know she does. All right, let's say Dave Ramsey. Uh, you know, to talk about investment for beginner. All these, all these people here talking about investment for beginner. I like him. He's a Marine. Simplify. There's a lot of people talking, you know, you know, investment for beginner. Uh, I like him a lot. He's, he's pretty pretty cool. He he explained rental property very well. Uh, but here's the thing: how how oh that's my live stream. I would say how am I? So when you look at all these investment for beginner man, uh, it's there's 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 a lot of things out there. There's just so much. 
And this is why I love high yield dividends. Um, because the investment for the beginner, I, my brain just kind of got, got fried a little bit here, is that when you, when you look at their channel, they essentially buy Amazon, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, you know, things that Warren Buffett would buy, Peter Lynch would buy, uh, you know, all those investment guru people, all those investment, you know, let, let, oh, I'm, you know, the greatest investor ever. All these people. You know, all these, the greatest investor, you know, all these experts. They, they, they will tell you to buy all these company. But the difference between me was when I first started out, I saw that. I was like, you know what? I should buy some Coca-Cola. I should buy some Microsoft. But w w why I didn't buy it? Because why? The biggest thing is that, I mean, Microsoft was expensive. Oh, MSF. T. I mean, last year, I mean, I'm paying almost $204, $300 of Microsoft. It's just expensive. Yeah, it, it, I just, you know, I only have 1000 a month going in there. Same thing as Tesla. Same thing as Apple. Same thing as anything. They're all very expensive. And then you buy them, and, and I'm essentially only own one or two share, one or two share, that's it. And it, it just grow. Yeah, my portfolio is gonna look nice. It's gonna be so green. It show my growth like 400 times, you know, 300 times, 200 times, whatever the growth is. Great. You know, uh, the, the, you know let's say I buy essentially the market, uh, the S&P 500. So it will show I have, you know, I will, it will show a growth of, let me, let me click on it real quick. Let's say one year. I bought one year ago. So my portfolio increased by what one percent? So one year ago, you know, four thousand seventy five, yeah, let's say it increased by one percent, two percent, three percent, you know, it's, it's green because I'm buying all the stock that give green. But I'm only owning like 10 share because they're so expensive, five, 10 share, maybe that's it. Let's just do the math here real quick. Let's say using Tesla, for example, and the average price is, uh, let's say two, my average is 205. And I put a thousand a month, uh, $1,000 a month. So $12,000 a year, okay? So 12,000, by the end of the year, this is the most I will own in Tesla, $12,000. Divide by 205, that's my average. I will own 58 shares. That's it, 58 shares. 58 shares. That's all I would ever own. Maybe plus or minus because it's an average. Maybe 65 share. It could be as low as 50 share. That's it. If I were to do growth, if I were to do this without doing without doing this. And this is the part that people don't understand because I went after income, because I went after income. Now I'm getting 6,800 or $81,000 a month, you know, or $81,000 a year, whilst it's $12,000 a year. Because I go after growth, I'm able to buy a lot more share of Tesla. I have cash flow. That's the big difference. The big difference is that I went after cash flow. Now I have money to buy more Tesla. The most I can ever own, if I went to pure growth, the most I can own, my portfolio would show, my portfolio literally would show uh, $12,000 and whatever the growth, the, the magnificent growth is. Let's say give it 20%. $12,000 plus 20%. That's it. Because that's the S&P 500, $12,000 plus, you know, 20%. That's what, that's literally what's gonna show in my account right here, about $14,000 with a 20% increase. 
yeah, I look good. My portfolio is green. I don't have anything negative. I don't show a loss, and and people love it. And people can like, oh look, he's a he's a great investor. But end of the day, it's my retirement. I'm the one who's retired. I don't care about bragging right or YouTube. You know, you know, a lot of people. The reason why the the one of the biggest reason why people don't like Tesla. It had nothing to do with the fund itself. The reason why a lot of these investors like her would never do it, um, or Ryan uh, Williams, for example, Tessie is a scam. Like, you know, some of these guys here, they would never buy it because, uh, like him, he would never buy Tesla because what happened, they showed their portfolio on the negative side. That's the, re that's, that's the reason. They want to they wanna have a bragging right where they show their portfolio is, has a positive return, a positive return. That's one of the big reasons why a lot of the YouTuber don't buy into high yield dividends because your portfolio is going to drop down. You're not going to you're not going to be a green portfolio. You're going to be a red portfolio. And a lot of people don't want a red portfolio. They want a green. They want to brag to whoever it is that they're talking to. Like, yeah, my portfolio is 10% above the S and P 500. I'm doing really well. The S&P 500 generate 10%. I'm generating 20%. Man, I am an investment guru. I am. I, I know what I'm doing. I know how to invest. I know how to make money. I'm smart. I'm super smart. So they can talk about over water cooler. I, I, I didn't really catch on to this, you know, because I always ask myself, why are these people making fun of these high yield dividends? I didn't really catch this until I was, I was in a, um, a, at a conference. Uh, a couple of days ago, so I'm I'm standing in a business, you know, just standing in a drink. They don't know who I am. I'm just I'm just a, a guy who's walking to the building, hanging out, drinking, this, eating. Bro, I was myself, hey Philly, uh, you open mic right now. Just letting you know. I didn't. All right. So I'm I'm in a in a room full of smart people. So I'm standing and listening to this guy, you know, talking about he's bragging about it. He was like, oh, yeah, man, I'm doing really well in my investment, man. I own Microsoft and Tesla and Amazon. They're all doing great. I'm just standing there drinking my coffee and go, hmm, interesting. Maybe I should ask him about high yield dividends. No, I'm just curious, you know. And he's bragging about it. And then he's like, oh, yeah, how, well, how do you know you're doing, you know, the conversation take place. And they're like, how do you know you're doing well? He said, like, yeah, you know, my portfolio, it's 15% it's above the S&P 500. No, like, and everybody's like, oh, really? Wow. All green, man. All green. I'm making money. I'm making 15%. All green. I'm like, I look at, you know, I just like, yeah, but how much is in your portfolio? It's great if you have $3 million and you can brag about it. Yeah, but, but what if you're starting out? You're brand new. You want to get rich. You're brand new and you want to get rich. You don't have $3 million. You don't have $2 million. So, so, so how big is his portfolio? He, well, he didn't say it, so I don't... But he's bragging about it. And you see all the people in the room bragging about it. You know, they're all talking about it. And they were just excited about this for this guy. They put him on a pedestal without looking at the context and the detail and things. And he's like, yeah, I'm new. I just started last year, you know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really interested, you know, so he started at the same time as I did. His portfolio is 20%, 15% uh, about the S and P 500. And everybody's like, wow, man, that's, you're the man, you're the man. And of course, because I'm in this little circle, listening to them talk and, uh, they were all bragging, they're all bragging about their portfolio, all green. And when they get to me, they're like, Hey, how you, how do you do, man? Do you, you, you do any invest? Yeah, I do a lot of investment. I, I actually, I, I do a lot. Um, it's, it's one of my hobby I like to do. They're like, Oh, really? Yeah. I love it. love it. So how's your portfolio? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm negative 20%, negative 20% of the S and P 500. Matter of fact, I'll give you the exact number. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm 22%. I'm 22% down. And they're like, oh, man. Tough to be you, man. Sorry, man. W man, what do you buy? That's, that's, that must be painful. 
Man, you should take advice from Jimmy over here. Yeah. Chad over here, you know. Chad, man. And Tyrone, man. Chad and Tyrone, they're driving Lamborghini and everything. Man. They're doing really well. And, uh... 15% off the S&P 500. Oh, yeah. And I said, no, nah, I appreciate it. Nah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for trying to hook me up with Chad and Tyrone. But I, I, don't need, I don't need to take advice from Chad and Tyrone. I know exactly what they're doing. I don't, I don't need that route. If you start last year with me, unless you have a rich uncle, I know exactly how much his portfolio is. His portfolio at the minimum is... 12000 24000 dollar and add 20% to it. I'll add 15% of what he, what he earned. I'm not saying what he didn't buy did not make money. That's great. But unless he put more money from somewhere else that I don't know about, uh, I already make $120,000 a year. This guy's not making any more than money than I am. He's not any richer than I am. Let's say he make $200,000 a year. Let's say he's a rich, I, I forgot what his profession was. And uh, let's say he make more money. But still, the most he's going to put is what, 20000 40000 Okay, great, put $40,000. let us say, let us say he put $48,000 in it. That's a lot of money. He put $48,000 and divide by 205 Tesla again, the same number. He's going to get 234 shares of Tesla. Tesla. That's it. If he were to buy only on Tesla. But if he buys something else like NVD, Microsoft, which he's talking about, you know, I mean, we're talking about, um, I don't know what uh, Microsoft price is. 411. Like four, yeah, 400. All he has is 116 shares of Microsoft. That's it. You know? It's not like he has 10,000 share, 100 share. So what happened is when he retired, he has to sell this in order to get income. He has to sell that share to get income. He's, now he's losing the principal. He has to sell. That's the only way. Where, where my approach is I get income, income for the rest of, for, for a long time. I'm going to get income every week, every month for, like I always say, the rest of my life. No matter what I'm doing. I could be drinking coffee, I could be in Hawaii, I could be traveling. I do a lot of traveling, by the way. And then, um, or I could be in jail. It didn't matter where I'm at. It didn't matter what I do, I get paid, regardless. I get paid income. That's the difference between an income fund and anything else. Now, why, why not a lot of people talking about it? Yeah, I don't know why. I have no idea. But the reason why we talk about it is to generate income so we can be financially independent. And some people retire early, but financially independent. All right, most important is financially independent. One of the big reasons why people don't talk about it is because it's new. It's brand new. It's only a year old. When you're a year old, people are going to be a lot of doubt. And right now, it's not helping. It's not helping. When, when the godfather of high-yield dividends, which is Tesla, is doing one of these things, $20, $9. Yeah, that's going to turn a lot of people off. That's definitely going to turn a lot of people off. It went from $9, uh, $20 to $9. And, and, and the Godfather Cousin, which is the clip, the Chinese version of this thing, it went from $24 to $14. Yeah, it's not going to help. It's not going to help the narrative. It's not going to help anything. It's not going to help the argument. It's, so it's new. People don't know much about it. They're already a little skeptical about dividends in general. And then, and then, and then you got you got you know the two most popular high yield dividends uh, uh, fund in the community is dropping like like ungodly amount. I mean, we're talking about forty one percent drop in prices. You know. So yeah, so it's it's gonna turn people off. That's why we're essentially the only YouTube people talking about it. I mean, there's not that many. I mean, there's us, there's Rob, uh, retiring dividends, uh, there's KC. He's a uh, he's a scalp scalper, you know. Uh, Max talk about high yield dividends. Panda talk about your high yield dividend. 
And there's some some new guy, big muscle. He like to flex his muscle. I forgot his name now. Sam, so, Sam something. So, I, I totally forgot his name. Let me uh, let me not mess it up. I'm gonna see if I can find him real quick. No, I don't. I don't have him. Dude, I thought I subscribed to him. I subscribed to all the high yield dividend. And then, oh, and then uh, our friends, Coach THB. THB is the, the 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 first. I mean, I don't know if he's the first, but when I first came on scene, he was talking about it. This this is the guy who created me. Uh, I mean, essentially gave me foundation to to give me the motivation to. It's okay. Well, I believe in high yield dividend before I watched THB. I already talk about it, but but I wasn't. I was unsure. I was unsure myself. But when I watch him, I was like, "Yeah, coach, coach the man." I watch all his video, all his video. And I'll tell you, coach, if you're out there, this is your best video right here. This, I love this video. I love this video. Reviewing the coach uh, yield max portfolio. Um, uh, I, I love this video. Yeah. So, and uh, there's not many people talking about it, uh, and. We're, we're getting to be a dinosaur. People are bailing out also. Uh, you know, they, at one point they were talking about it and then they stop. I don't know why. I'll give you an example. Like uh, Panda called her ETF Bobby and uh, she was talking about high yield dividends and she's like, buy, high, buy no, no, she talked about dividends. Buy dividends and then you know, buy, you know, QILD, XY, you know, all these funds out there. And I'm like, oh, this is great. I love talking about it. I love watching. But all of a sudden now she's talking about selling these things. Get rid of them. So she's abandoning ship. There's a lot of people who's just abandoning ship. I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. Um, you know, except, except uh, I love unconventional wealth. Unconventional wealth is to me is like, he is truly the godfather of this thing. He's, he understand it. He understand it real well. Me and him, we, we align in a lot of things. He, he used margin very well. I'm trying to use margin the same way. I, uh, yeah, I love, and he explained how to play Tusty very well. You don't need to have a lot of share of it. You don't have to own a lot of position of it. He he used Tusty to get the margin. That's it. And it's cheap. He's a. Uh, I learned from uh, watching him too over the past year. It's interesting. Yeah, I was watching one of his latest ones, and he was showing his options of how he's playing like wide mag and what whatnot. But he goes into his options, and he's selling puts like out to twenty twenty six. Yeah. Like. Now, the, some of the stuff he talked about is a little bit advanced for me. I'm a beginner where he's an advanced level. He's like level 80 World of Warcraft. I'm level seven. You know, like he's, he's carrying the, the new new hammer and shield and sword. And he has a new skill, a new spell. And I still have the you know beginner level. And so, uh, yeah, so we're not, I, I don't understand 90% of what he talked about. But I, the stuff that I understand, I fully understand. The only thing I don't like about his video, he's always talking about steel. I'm like, what the heck, man? Didn't matter what his thumbnail is. His thumbnail can be TSL meltdown, and he spent 30 minutes talking about CLM. And then, <laughs> well, the, the reason why he does that, because he promote his e-guy. And that's where he make his money, his e-guy and books and Discord membership and all stuff, which is cool. That's cool, man. You, you, you do you, make money any way you can. Uh, honorable investing, he used to talk about Tesla a lot. Uh, you used to talk, talk about uh, high yield dividend. Then Panda called him out on it. He said he's a he's an ETF Ken. So we have ETF Bobby and ETF Ken. So now he's he, he he's he's leaving the community. He's leaving the community. Uh, maybe he is. I don't know. But that's what according to Panda. But there's not a lot of people talking about high yield dividends. I totally understand. I mean, totally understand when when you have two two of your two of your uh, amazing fun uh, to what you call the the anchor, the core fun of the high yield, the, the high yield space is dropping like 41%. Let, let's see what how much Tesla dropped. Tesla dropped 55% from ins, from since inception. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have people like abandon ship left and right. I, I don't blame them. I don't blame them. But here's the part. Why why am I not banning ship? Because I believe in them. I don't know why. I don't know why or everyone in our Discord understood exactly what we're doing. We know exactly what we're doing. This is irrelevant 
to us. This is what's relevant to us. This price means we can get more. And you want to know how I got rich, Rob? I don't know if you hear there. Rob, if you want to know, one of the first question when I started my streaming, I think uh, somebody named Sat, uh, Spanland, or uh, maybe, is it Spanland who asked me this question? I'm trying to find it right now. Somebody asked me the question, how did I get $80,000? Or where did I get the money to, all right, yeah, it was Robert Blaine. How much do you yeah, have invested this to generate $81,000? Because I'm generating $81,000 income. There is no way I could generate $81,000 income if Tesla price was at $20. If Tesla price was at $20, it's impossible to generate in this short amount of time unless I throw a lot of money in there. A lot of money in there. That means I just don't work. I mean, that means I don't eat. and I just eat noodle and... And I don't buy anything. I don't even pay. I don't like pay nothing. Like, one percent of my. I only make one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. There's no way because the price is too expensive, twenty dollar. But the reason is I'm able to do this because it's nine dollars, eight dollar, ten dollar. It hover. It hover, the ten dollar price for a long, long time. It hit. It hit below thirteen. And then it's and it stay eleven dollar for like since no since October from October all the way till January and it dropped down even lower. Think about it, it stay under under uh, under eleven uh, stay under twelve dollars since October. My portfolio exploded, exploded because the price is so cheap. That's how I got richer. That's how you're going to get rich. This is, this is literally, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to timestamp this because I'm going to make a short out of this. If you want to get rich, if you want to get rich right now, this is, this is truly one chance in a lifetime where Tesla price is $9. Can it go lower? Yeah, then, then, then maybe you have a second chance. But if it doesn't go lower and it go back up, guess what? This is it. This is one chance in a lifetime to explode your high yield dividends. Explode it, to grow it, to get 6,000 share, to get as many shares as possible because it's $9. When this thing go back up, you're gonna wish it was $9. Like, oh my God, I wish I bought Tesla and Tesla at $9. Can you imagine back in the day, man, we, I owned this thing for $9. Now it's like $18, $20, $25. I low, that's the way you do it. Yeah. That's how you I get rich. Now, yeah, go ahead, Rob. I'm sorry, Rob, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, uh, hey, before I log out, I got, I got one minute left, a couple minutes, since Claude just joined. Claude, Claude, brother. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, I want to introduce you to a new member. He's an option trader, uh, brand new. Uh, Rob, I want you to meet our sensei here. This is this is the guy, man. He. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Rob, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm all right. Come here is real generous right there. I'm, yeah. I'm no sensei. <laughs> he, we're, we're all his grasshopper. He like yeah. grasshopper. You you. You slow down there, grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> so Rob is uh, Rob and Brian. They're 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 in the same. Um, let's say they're in the same group, age group, you know, and uh, and they um, and he's been doing uh, option trading for a while, and he just he just literally just log in and joined Discord this morning, and I told him I said you're in a perfect community, man. That's all they do. And uh, during, during, during the uh, trade time, you come in and uh, the option trading voice channel 
go in there, jump in with Kenny, jump in with Claude. Man, you can hook and jabbing. My favorite is when they're on the opposite side of each other, and and they're just it's the the discussion is like eating popcorns, man. It's like movie. You like it's like watching watching two gladiator fight. You know. You agree, Claude? That's awesome. Yeah, you know it. It it, it can be. It can be nerve wracking at times, but at the same time, it's very infor informative and very supportive. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Everybody has a different view on it. That's the way I look at it. Like I said, I know I've been doing this, what, 24, 25 years trading options, but it's always nice to see other people's perspective and see how they're trading. Because I, yeah. I st to this day, I don't still know it all. I learned, you know, and I'm not, I'm, I don't walk around bragging, well, I got this many years under my belt. Who cares? You know, it's it's knowledge and learning from new people and seeing their strategies. So, so you and Claude date back to the si same time yeah, period, well I'm, before I'm, me. So yeah, I'm older than that's what I'm saying. You two senseis are the ones, not me. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, Claude been trading for a long, long time. Date back to the nineties, not me. He, he's been trading yeah. before. He he's been trading when Mark Zuckerberg was still was still in in MIT. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, when he was in Silent Diaper. <laughs> yeah, he was a little shit kicker. Yeah. He he was still he was still uh playing pebbles in the sand somewhere. You no, know. it was funny cuz uh when I when uh actually the dot com had exploded when I started trading options too. So, you could throw anything at money back then and make money. I made so much money off of AOL.com back then. It was ridiculous. It's just no matter what it was, you put money at it and you yeah. would triple your money instantly. Is is, is um, AOL still around or is it closed now? Oh yeah, I, I still use it. Really? Oh, so, yeah. Now, who own it now? Who own AOL now? I'm sure. Uh, I I'm not. I honestly I don't know. Who That's the, crazy, who's man. I, 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 you you mentioned something I haven't heard in a long time. Yeah. AOL. Well, be, because AOL made me a lot of money back in the day, so I, I just I'm brand loyal to it. I use it as my internet service. So. I'm old school, I guess. AOL, formerly known as AOL, originally known as America Online. Uh, 1983, still have employee. Wow. That's crazy, man. Uh, God bless them, man. AOL, God yeah. bless them. Yeah, no, this I is awesome. There, yeah, because there was times that one week I... I, I remember I bought options on AOL and I think I made thirteen thousand dollars in one week on it. You know, because wow. it just it would explode back then. Yeah. You know, people were whatever you could get in on, people were just throwing money at it left and right. Uh -huh. You know, it was crazy back then in the days. All right, guys, I hate to do this, but I do have a hard cut date. I have to leave the house at ten o'clock. Exactly. My life, I live on time schedule, like timeline, time hack. I gotta be at a certain time, a time hack. I gotta be in the bathroom by a certain time. I, you know, like everything is time hacked. So my next time hacks my life here is 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, I have to be out of the driveway uh, because I'm going to the rifle range. I'm gonna go shooting. Well, I'm not shooting. I'm gonna watch people shoot. You know, that's that's what the boss do. But uh, but I'm gonna go and observe, and uh, you know, and and I'll be. And then after that, I'm gonna go to the PX and go go shopping and buy some uniforms, some clothes. I'll probably make some YouTube video about that, um, and uh, you know, just buy some, buying some clothes, some uniform. It's fun. It's it's fun. Going shopping at the PX is fun, especially when I walk in. Uh, <laughs> I got this one kid. It would yell across the PX, "Good morning, sir." Dude, it's it's a PX. Calm down. Calm down. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Can I tell you something real quick? Yeah. Uh, years ago, when I was dating this girl, she went into the military, and I went down to uh, Texas to see her. And I went into that uh, store that she was in there shopping, and, and yeah. this new recruit bumped into, uh, he must have bumped into a sergeant or whatever. No, he yeah. bumped into me, is what he did. Yeah. And that sergeant pulled him aside and chewed him a new butt. I felt so bad for the kid. I was like, I could care less that he, he came around the corner because he had a basket in his hand. Yeah. And he was running through there, but I was like, it's okay, it's okay. And boy, he chewed him a new one, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Oh, oh, my! Uh, I took my, I you know, my college girlfriend to Camp Pendleton. Uh, oh, it was called El Toro Base back then. I don't know what it's called now, El Toro Air Base. 
and mm-hmm. it was at McDonald, and I have a beeper attached to my uniform, which is you shouldn't. And this guy didn't care. This guy didn't care. I had my girlfriend and his uh, and her family. So I'm trying. I wanna. I wanna. I want to be nice to the family, so I, I invite the family, her family, and her to the base, and you know we dated in college, and so I'm really really happy, and they, you know these guys uh, and her family are very successful. They're very rich, very successful. They work in television and stuff, like that. and uh, and so they, 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 you know, yelling and screaming is not something they do, you know. So anyway, I'm in McDonald. I went to get food, and this guy he walked in the door. He pulled the door open. And he all he heard was like, "See this show? What the hell is this?" And then I'm the only Marine in uniform, so uh, you know, like, and he's in uniform. It's it's a base McDonald, and I knew exactly he's yelling at me. But I thought I was like, you know, I'm looking around, like, okay, I'm good. But I didn't realize I have a beeper attached, and he beeline toward me. I got one on the left, one on the right of my ear. Yell at me in the McDonald in front before I about to order food and telling me about my beeper and I'm standing there in precision attention. Yes, gunny. Yes, gunny sergeant. Yes, gunny sergeant. The whole time, and of course my girlfriend who's like two feet behind me, she's crying. And her parents came over and crying. They all like they all like shocked. And I'm just getting yelled at. Yeah, you think she date me after that? <laughs> That girl did not answer my phone after that. She ran on me so yeah. far. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I was like, dude, I, I, like, I, I'm 19 years old. I want to do is, you know, I, I like. Well, lucky she's a good, she's a good girl, and I. But you know, I was like, what the frick is wrong with you, man? But you know, hey, I got yelled at, and that's just the way part of military life. Anyway, I gotta go, guys. Uh, I appreciate it. Now remember when I when I shut down the live stream. People in Discord, this this thing gonna continue 24 hours, seven days a week. There's always somebody gonna be here, um, you know, chatting. Uh, so, Rob, uh, yeah, welcome. Hang out and check out the group and uh, and and talk to people, make friends, and uh, and I'll see you around, my friend. Thank you. You too. All right. Hey, bye, everyone. <laughs>